Okay, it's one o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Oh, 9 a.m. one o'clock. Okay, I'm going to apologize. I did not sleep well last night. I seem to be having a version to the full moon. Okay, it's nine o'clock. I would like to call this meeting to order. We can have our clerk, Jesse Clark, please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor Lansett. Are you present? I am present. Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong? Present. Councilor Braybrook? Present. Councilor Cadigan? Present. Councilor Franzen? Present. For staff, we have Donna Taggart, CAO Treasurer? Present. Steve Brockbank, Director of Emergency Services? Present. Dylan Kosh, Director of Recreation and Facilities? Present. Evan Grieger, Director of Public Works? Present. Barb Waldron, Director of Building and Planning, CBO? Present. Bianca Jagisevic, Deputy Clerk? Present. Chastity Robertson, Deputy Treasurer? Is on the line. Amber Novak, Legislative Coordinator, Executive Assistant to the CAO. Present. Rachel Stark, uh, Marketing and Economic Development Coordinator. Present. Matt Winches, Supervisor of Waste, Public Works Coordinator. Present. Adele Arbor, Planner, will be, be joining us. Okay. And Jesse Clark, Director of Corporate Services, Clerk is present. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just let everyone know that the proceedings of this meeting will be recorded and made available on the internet. Now we'll proceed to item 1.3 of our agenda, which is land acknowledgement and moment of reflection. We respectfully acknowledge that Trent Lakes and Peterborough County are located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nation, which include Alderville, Beausoleil, Kurt Lake, Georgina Island, Hiawatha, Rama, and Scugog Island First Nations. Trent Lakes respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We will now take a moment to reflect on these principles and our duties and responsibilities as members of council. Thank you. We can move on to item two of our agenda, which is the disclosure of pecuniary interest. If anyone in council has a pecuniary interest on an item on the agenda, please state it now or any time during the meeting prior to speaking up on the item you have an interest in. Seeing no hands, we can move on to item three of our agenda, which is the approval of the agenda as circulated. Would anyone make a motion, please? Say. I see Councillor Franzen for a mover and Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. We can move on to item four of our agenda, which is delegations. And item 4.1 is Lois O'Neill Jackson from the Kinmount Health Center Renovation Fund request. Go ahead, Lois. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for allowing me to be here today to speak to you. Um, as you know, I'm Lois O'Neill Jackson, and I'm with the Kinmount District Health Services Foundation. Accompanying me are Leanne Hobson, who is the lead for our Building and Maintenance Committee, and Kim Restivo Galea. She's the secretary of the board. She is the secretary, very important person, of the board and a member of the executive. Thank you for asking us to be here today to talk to you about our request for financial contribution towards renovations that have and continue to be undertaken at the Kenmount and District Health Center. A letter was provided to you with a summary of our request, and rather than reiterating what's in the letter, I'll be providing with you with some additional information respecting the projects we have undertaken. We are so fortunate to have a number of medical professionals interested in locating in the Kinmount facility. As a foundation, we endeavor to do everything we can to accommodate and welcome these new services to our community. This year, we have put a substantial amount of time and finances into the building for both maintenance and renovations. To date, this has totaled almost $10,000 and we are not yet done. The maintenance for 2023 has included refinishing all the floors and painting most of the upstairs offices, hallway and waiting area. On top of the cost of the paint and the contractors, over 50 hours of volunteer time was spent picking up materials arranging building access on weekends, moving furniture, removing or replacing fixtures, such as the artwork. Um, and with respect to the renovations, the work just for the new dental hygiene room has included 
the removal of carpet and installation of vinyl floor, the purchase of cupboards and countertops, and over 51 hours of volunteer time. Still to be done is the plumbing work, which is estimated at $3,000, and the repairs to drywall, inst installation of the counters, installation of trim, painting the wheelchair ramp, and replacing the carpet, and all of this will cost um, approximately $300 just for the materials. The rest of the work is proposed to be done by our board members and volunteers, which is most often their spouses. What do you call that, voluntold? <laughs> um, and the hygienist is even volunteering her time to paint the walls in her office. Oh, and none of the volunteer time mentioned does include any travel, whether that be to pick up the cupboards, pick up the paint, even back and forth to the health building just to let the contractors in. In addition, we are also trying to complete a small procedure room for Dr. Leslie, and we are so happy to have Dr. Leslie on our team up at the Health Centre. He is a fantastic person um, and such an asset to the community. Everybody loves him. Um, when he first came here, he was invited by the Quartha Lakes Family Health Team to use their facility in Bob Cajun and to schedule time there. I think he, they were trying to steal him away from us personally. That's not in my notes, but that's my personal opinion. Um, and we would really hate to lose him for any hours to Quartha Lakes because he has no problem filling his time in Kinmount, and I know he would love to be doing this too. And uh, he even would prefer to have the services available in Kinmount because, as we know, they are definitely needed. And if you don't know, small procedures is like lumps, bumps, minor, um, like a mole removal, so minor little procedures that normally they have to go to Peterborough or Lindsay after being referred to a specialist to have that done. Um, when we started the process for renovations to this room, we did not realize the mountain of difficulties we would encounter. Building permits, engineering delays, engineering reports, and more. And for this project, our costs are over $10,000 and we still have more to do. <clears throat> While not really part of our request today, the Foundation is very well aware of the financial support that the municipality provides to the newer Buckhorn Health Centre in comparison to the financial support provided to the older Kinmount and District Health Centre. That may have something to do with the timing of the agreements, but I had to throw that in here. Um, both facilities provide service to residents and non-residents of the municipality, and both buildings are owned by the municipality. Kinmount has the benefit of a very, very hardworking foundation, and Buckhorn has the benefit of reserves within the municipality and the, in the, within the budget. Now those, of course, were also from donations, but it's still the same, all the same tax dollars. The purpose of this delegation is actually to request specific financial support towards medical-related renovations at the Kinmount and District Health Centre specifically to cover costs associated with renovations to the municipal building so we can continue to provide enhanced medical services within our own community. Since being established, the Foundation has worked diligently to support the facility in the development and maintenance of a community health centre by providing support, financial and otherwise, for the medical, health and support services to Kinmount and the surrounding areas. It is our intention to continue to do so. And despite, and despite being in existence for at least 20 years, we have only just begun. Thank you, members of council. And we will gladly, myself, if not me, then Leanne and Kim will gladly answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Liz. Anyone in the council have any questions? Councilor Cranford, go ahead. What specific amount are you asking for, Lois? Do you have that? We don't really have a specific amount in mind, but that's why I included the numbers of what we've spent like between the the maintenance and the renovations. We're at $20,000 already is what has yep. come out of our um, foundation accounts to provide these services. So that'd be really nice, but recognizing budgets, it's, you know, yeah. I'll leave it at council's discretion. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, have you approached the neighboring municipalities as well? Because uh, there is a lot of people in the city of Port Lakes and Halliburton 
county that used that facility as well? And this is where I can, I'm going to defer to Kim to confirm this. We receive donations from all counties. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No governments. Though. No. Yeah. Just that's, the, just that's the what I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. And well, that I'm leading to the next part. Um, one of our fellow board members has written a delegation and is in the process of getting on the agendas for the um, for Halliburton County, Minden Hills, and for the City of Cortha Lakes to make that request to them. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, Lois, well, nice to see you. Um, question sort of following uh, Councilor Franzens. Do you have any idea what the breakdown of your uh, patient uh, load is in terms of uh, residents, whether it's Trent Lakes or Halliburton or City of Puerto Lakes? No, we do not. And unfortunately, we don't have access to that data because, for example, I'm going to use myself as a perfect example. My postal code, they would normally do it by postal code. That's how the, the ministry looks at it. Well, my postal code is actually a Quarth Lakes postal code, Burnt River, but I live in Trent Lakes. So you can't really, it doesn't work that way. But I'm sure that if the um, a same type of statistic was looked at for the Buckhorn Center, it would be surprising how many people were actually from Peterborough, Selwyn, outside of the municipality of Trent Lakes as well. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Um, nice to see you, um, Just a question your foundation. Uh, did the foundation funds cover your expenses to date that you're mentioning here, the 20000 Yes, they have. Sorry, I should be going through you, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please do. I've forgotten my procedures after all this time. Um, and I will actually defer to Leanne. She's behind me waiting yeah. to answer. Yeah. So, ahead, so far for our hygienist one, we spent out of out of our out of our own funds about seven thousand dollars, and that was for the flooring, um, the cupboards, and the countertop. Um, today, actually, the plumber is there installing the sinks and the, the taps for the hygienist. His bill is $3,000, so $10,000 is pretty darn close. The um, procedures room for Dr. Leslie, the only thing we've managed to get done so far is buy the light, which was four grand, I think, or so, and get the room painted. I have tried three different engineers to get a drawing in order to have this light installed. I have had no luck whatsoever. I've tried three different electrical contractors to get this light installed. No quotes, hardly any callbacks. I am at a wall, I have no idea. So, so far, that room has cost us about $4,500, but I have no idea what the rest of it's gonna be because I, I have no idea what these professionals are gonna charge us. And it is beyond the scope of my volunteers to, to, to do this light. It's just too difficult technically, and um, the municipality is asking for things that my volunteers can't provide. Now, the hygienist room was cheap in the long run because all the labor was done by volunteers. It would have been double at least if I had to call if I had to bring somebody in. So altogether, I don't think ten thousand dollars is out of the question for either of those renovations. Thanks. That's what we put. Yeah. Well, Paul, uh, if I may ask, uh, your foundation balance uh, after your expenses so far? Yes. Yes, and through your worship, I actually have the most recent um, financial statement, which was provided to us by our um, treasurer and our total assets right now uh, are ninety four thousand two hundred and fifty five dollars. Now, some of that is already committed. Um, we do have payments that are being made to um, the doctor as part of his incentive for coming to Kinmount. Um, so some of that money is already committed, but that's what we do have currently. And our um, our major one of our major fundraisers is our Christmas appeal, which is just starting right now to sort of replenish some of our monies. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, more? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Um, so of that 94,000, uh, the, the money is that's, that have been spent on the, the plumbing and, and whatnot that you've mentioned, is that off the 94 or is it is the 94 after everything's been spent? Through your worship, um, some of that is. But the again, only outstanding bill right now is the plumbing. That's the only one. Everything else that has been paid for. So, for the, from, no, and the light too. It's fun. Oh, the, light. the light has been paid for. So the only thing outstanding is the plumbing and that was because it's being done today. So but it'll be probably paid by the end of the week. Right, no, 3,000? 3,000, 2,900 and change. I could tell you exactly about yeah, here. That's okay, that's okay. Oops. One last one, one last follow-up. One last follow-up. If I may ask our CAO, um, as far as contributions from the municipality to the Kinmount Medical Center, if you have that so, handy. Thank you, and through you. So if you are you talking the operating budget that we budget annually for that center, or are you talking the work that is capital? Uh, whichever one applies as closely to uh, Melissa's uh, request. Okay. So Dylan can certainly answer the capital. Um, okay. if you want to go ahead? Oh. Yeah. Um, for operating expenses, <clears throat> the Kinmet Medical Center is twenty thousand five hundred dollars for twenty proposed for twenty twenty four. It was twenty thousand two hundred fifty for twenty twenty three. One last comment. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's uh, I think it's important that we uh, that we support. Uh, you know our, our two medical centers and, and and i see it as a as a, a worthy a worthy expense um to assist uh, and we have uh, a lot of volunteers that are volunteering their time 50 plus hours plus plus um so that we have to factor that in um and, and assist where we can um so uh, i'm in support of whatever amount uh, is decided. Okay, any other comments or questions? Let's see. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamson. Sure. Um, I just wanted to echo uh, Councilor Rubik's comments. I think we certainly want to support our health centers. They're vital, vitally important to our residents who take advantage of them. Um, I, what we want to try and do as well is pay our fair share. So that's why some of the questions were around what about you know the other municipalities and how many of your patients are from outside. But I think certainly there's a willingness to uh, to support uh, your efforts and uh, you know financial outlays. So I guess we'll talk about that later in the agenda. But um, certainly supportive. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, I just have a comment. I think it's very important to support dental hygienists because it does contribute to your general better health, so it's all important because it might stop something from going to the next level and then you're in a hospital. And so I think it's very important that Grand Lake supports their residents. Thank you very much for your delegation. Anyone here to make a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Brace. I'll make a motion that I receive. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Be Councilor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I could just impose on um, to have a copy of that other signed agreement. I'll just get someone to bring down a seal for me. I'll just wait in the lobby. Okay, it's been Thank you. And thank you, Council, for allowing us to speak here today. Very well. We can move on to item five of our agenda. Which is our draft budget. We go to 5.1. Budget summary and Donna Taggart, our CAO treasurer. Would you like to speak to the title? Thank you and through you. So just a reminder, uh, we'll start with that draft summary for 2024 budget. So the levy and the tax rate calculations are based on the same level of service as 2023 as required under the budget policy. 
So if there are spending increases or any new spending contained in the budget today, it is because it costs more to maintain the existing services or because the spending has already been approved by council. So as a reminder, the amount shown today only include the municipality's portion of the tax rate, which is 43 cents on every dollar collected. So the 2024 draft budget document shows an overall budget increase between 2023 and 2024 of $3,246.00. Um, just over that, or 14.06%. So this is largely due to the increase in the capital budget for the build of the new dedicated mechanic recreation uh, and facilities building and previously approved rolling stock and equipment replacement. There is also, there has also been an increase in the wage portion of all budgets in anticipation of the upcoming QP negotiations with the expiration of that agreement, April 1st, 2024. There's also been an increase in the legal budgets for all departments, you will see, due to a combination of incre increased advice required lately and the switch in legal representation in 2023. So the actuals in the budget today are up till about November 15th for most departments. There is still some pretty significant spending planned for the remainder of 2023 and audit entries to complete. There are also revenue entries to complete for reserve transfers to offset some of that spending. So you will see the tax levy increase in the draft budget is $391,648.82, which is 3.72% which would result in a tax rate increase of approximately 1.88% with estimated growth, which includes the estimated tax ratio, which is set by the county, reflecting the distribution between tax classes. So residential, commercial, industrial, and farm. Should council approve the additional council staff budget request shown today, the levy request would be, the levy increase would be 5.45% and the tax rate increase 3.58%. So I did want to remind you as well that the province has frozen property tax assessments for the past four years, leaving all assessment values at January 1, 2016. And you will see that the draft calculations do include an anticipated growth, 2023 growth, which is the difference between the assessment role at January 1, 2023, and when the role was cut off in December, or actually the end of November, 2023, which is estimated at 1.71% for new build and addition. So the, the draft levy increase would result, and that's shown in this document here, an increase uh, of, $21.67 paid for the average single family detached dwelling, an increase of um, $35.99 for the average single family detached dwelling on the water, and $32.39 for a seasonal dwelling. So if it's okay through you, um, if there are any questions on any pages, feel free to ask them. If if not, I will proceed to the next one at your direction. Okay, does anyone on the council have any questions? <coughs> Being none, feel free to proceed. Huh? Thank you, and for you. Mm -hmm. So the next page shows the additional impact of the requests today that are included in some of the departmental budgets. Um, so some, should the additional budget requests presented today be approved, the average single family detached property would see an overall tax increase of $42.06. The average single family detached property on the water would see $69.06 and average seasonal property $62.15. So discussions on each of these budget requests will be as part presented to you as part of the budgets, departmental budgets as we get there. But we should actually uh, also consider the request today from the Kinmount Medical Center. So I'll write that down. So are there any questions on that page? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lampton. Um, the only other one, I'm not sure it was in here, was the Buckhorn Buck. 
um, and the proposals around that, which were 20,000 or something or something different, the different options. Right. Is that included? Should that be included as one? Right. Of the Thank you for you. Um, that one is a bit tricky to predict. Um, we do have some quotes on what it would co cost to refurbish the buck, but we are supposed to get some of the funds in the bank account currently uh, from the beautiful Buckhorn Group. But yes, that was a bit tricky to put in. But we, when we get to that report, perhaps we can consider an amount there and, and include that. But it is a bit tricky to add at this time. Uh, I do know that we checked yesterday the the beautiful Buckhorn Group has renewed the insurance for 2023, so that cost wouldn't be incorporated, but it definitely would be refurbishing the buck, which is in, in Dylan's report, but they do have a reserve to go toward that, which mm -hmm. I want to say is around $6,000, uh, something to that effect. That. So, um, yeah, yeah, I just... Sorry, through you, I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose sight of yes. all of these so yeah. that we have them all yeah. accounted for. Yeah. That could be a fairly substantial number, depending on what they have to contribute. It may not be, but you kind of should be putting something in there just in case. I don't know if you have any ideas. That can... For sure, we will when we get to your report. Yeah, we we can certainly talk about yeah. when we get to the report. Okay, please. Right. Thank you. Okay. Any more other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So you will see the next page we come to is the response and, and thanks to Rachel for, for providing this document for us. So there were, um, from the budget feedback that was released, there were 73 individuals that provide a comment and it was really split for those asking that property taxes only be increased enough to maintain current services and support for a reasonable increase to enhance services. So I have provided for you or Rachel um, the actual some of the actual written responses that were provided through this through the release of the feedback questionnaire. But yeah, that is for your information. Through the mayor, uh, I, I I don't know what value this has when we have 73 responses. Thank you and through you. And we actually put it out an extra month. Yeah. If not a little and, bit more. And, and, and this is no criticism of staff. It's just the, 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 the apathy that some of the apathy that we have out there that we don't get very many responses. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilor Franzen. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Marilyn. So just, just as a comment, uh, last year when the county had an open house for their budget, they had one individual come. So it's not unusual to have very poor response and on a relative basis, perhaps we're not doing so badly. <laughs> Thank you for that comment. Our, our gallery is filling up generously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Carry on, Donna. Okay, right. Councilor Brader. Thank you. Uh, what's uh, development services? Is that, are you able to sort of distill that? So thank you, Andrew. So that would be um, economic development, potentially some planning type services. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm seeing none, we can move along. Okay. So we're going to dive right into the capital budget. That's our first one today. <clears throat> so you'll see that the capital budget projection shows a draft capital budget tax levy increase of 458,564.13, which is the difference between the tax levy requirement in 2023 and 2024, and a budget increase of $2,878,478, largely from the new bill for the public works and recreation and facilities building. Part of the capital budget does include the amount for the OMPF funding, which we are now aware of, so $1,409,800, which is up $29,700 from 2023, or 2.15%, uh, and that is always used toward capital spending annually. There is a commitment from the province for, it's called OSIF funding, so the Ontario Community Infrastructure Funding, and that is always used in the capital budget as well for renewal and rehabilitation of critical <laughs> infrastructure 
it's based on <coughs> formula and the cost to replace current value assessment or current value replacement costs. So we're waiting for that amount from the province. We're hearing it's supposed to come soon. I have in the draft budget included the amount for that we received last year, so $141,021. So that will have to be adjusted if that is if that is changed, but we're hoping to at least get that amount again. And um, there is borrowing revenue in the draft budget, which is estimated at this time based on what is being spent in 2023. Uh, that is, of course, once again, the build. So I can confirm as well that the loan application was submitted to Infrastructure Ontario, and I've already had that approval and signed the documents for that, which is good. And the amounts contained in the capital budget for that build do include the contingency amount, which may or may, may not be required, but we have put it in there for now and offset that with, with either reserves or, or borrowing more than likely. So hopefully we don't need the entire amount in there, but we've got it in there for now. So um, if, if council are on board and through the mayor, if we can just start, if there aren't any questions on that and go through the individual departments included in the capital budget. Please go ahead. So that would be Evan. Public Works is first. Please. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Through you, Mayor Lamset, members of council, before you today have the draft capital budget for roads. Um, <laughs> just the, your standard road program, we have some surface treatment work, some microsurfacing work, as well as gravel. Um, the biggest price item on this, as Donna mentioned, is the new depot. Um, it's sort of been the focus. It's sort of why we're not focusing on any big um, reconstruction of any roadways or anything like that. We're trying to focus on the buildings right now. Um, and just to provide a little bit of an update, that build is going well. Um, we have found some cost savings already on the project. Um, the contractors and the consultants are very good at looking for different opportunities to try to find cost savings on other needs, switching from different materials and just uh, finding more efficient way to complete the work. Um, so I've been quite um, pleased with that. As Donna mentioned, there is a contingency included, which is a, quite a high number, but it's always good to have because you never know what you're going to run into with the construction project. Um, there's a few truck replacements. We're replacing two, three quarter tons and a, and a half ton truck. Um, we've sort of got preliminary quotes on that, which has been actually quite encouraging and somewhat surprising the numbers that we've received back from um, different uh, different dealerships. Um, thankfully, with the new purchasing policy that's in place, it allows us to have a little more freedom on exploring um, with different uh, dealerships to see what we can do, with the, especially to find the best deal for the municipality. Um, it allows us to sort of, instead of just tendering, you can sort of talk to the dealership, find out what they have, and ensure that they can meet what we need, um, as well as sort of keeping up in the budget that we have. Um, we are, uh, there is one loader replacement, um, and we are still waiting on the delivery of our 2023 tractor. It was originally supposed to be delivered in June of 2023, and we are now almost December of 2023 and we still have not seen it. It is sort of typical, unfortunately, with um, the industry that you're seeing longer lead times and delays. Um, one good news story is that we have uh, we have a new tandem coming in 2024. And um, with that in, we have found a way to actually hopefully save money for the municipality moving forward by refurbishing some of the existing equipment and reutilizing that on a new cabin chassis, which is uh, it's something the municipality has never done. We're going to do it, see how it works. But if it works out, it saves us about 100 grand on that new truck. So that's an encouraging part. Um, so, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, that sort of hit the highlights. Um, we try to spread out the service treatment and records opening program. So we're getting all parts of uh, the municipality. As you can see, we're doing some service treatment as well. We did a little bit on the dish over on the key, as well as in the microsurfacing. Typically, try to focus on one, one area and a lot of Thank you very much, Evan. Does anyone on council have any questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lampson, and you <coughs> keep looking my way. <laughs> so I have a lot of questions, just as you know. Um, uh, two questions for you, Evan. Um, the first one is gravel crushing material and resurfacing um, way over budget this year. Uh, do you expect that to continue because we've only uh, budgeted a little bit more than what we budgeted last year. You see those line items I'm talking about? Yep. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Strong for you, Mayor. I'm to the Deputy Mayor. Yes, we, I believe um, each year it's sort of that number changes due, depending on how many roads we're doing and stuff like that. Um, we did find that there was a little over budget this year and we did adjust accordingly, I believe, with the amount of work that we're going to be doing next year that that number has been adjusted um, sufficiently. It has become like, the biggest. The biggest cost you're seeing with the increase in gravel crushing is the delivery costs. That's the fuel costs that are increasing, the equipment costs are increasing. So to get that delivered and trying to find the most efficient way to apply the gravel to the roads and get it to a place where you can haul out of it is sort of the, the balancing because the municipality geographically is quite large. Got it. Thank you. And the second question, um, I noticed that uh, on the list of road improvements, uh, we didn't have, I think it's East Clear Bay Road or Mill Bay Hill both of which have been asked about uh, by the public um, repeatedly. So what, what's the response to them? Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Lamb, said to the Deputy Mayor. Um, so I'll start with the uh, Mill Bay. So there is, it's not a capital project, so we will have some operating expenses to finish paving that. We did, as you're aware, did a fair amount of work on that this fall. A lot of, brought in a lot of material, brought the grade up to help uh, assist with that issue. And then we plan to go back in the spring some spring, summer, depending on availability to actually do pay that. Um, and then for the question regarding these clear base, so we did have a roads need study completed this year. One of the recommendations of that was actually to have, um, to create a policy um, to set some criteria and leave it to council in the end to determine when to probably hard top road. This is in times of when to go from gravel to a surface treated road. Um, some of those factors that I'm sort of exploring right now is looking at the average um, daily traffic as well as sort of the location um, as well as sort of the overall maintenance and whether it makes sense to have a grader in that area or other gravel roads and stuff like that so there's sort of multiple factors but it is something that i'm gonna that i want to develop hopefully bring within the next couple months and it's something that i think because that's a common question we get all the time is when is my gravel road going to be hard top well at least then we'll get to a point where we'll have a policy and say well we have a policy if it meets these criteria we can bring in presentation. We'll present it to the council. Say this is the thing we are looking at. If you recommend whether to or not, and then council at that time can make a decision whether to uh, hard top the road. Excellent. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Franz. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, just curious, what does the term Microsoft uh, microsurfacing mean? Thank you, uh, Councillor Franz. And through you, Mayor Lamp, I did Councillor Franz. So microsurfacing is a type of treatment. So it's Micro, because it's just a layman's term, it's small, so it's a small surface. So, surface treatment is a thicker rock with the tar and chip, but micro surfing is a finer rock within sort of the ceiling. So, it's just a finer layer. So, it's you sort of go, you have slurry seal, which is a really, really fine, which almost be what you see on a driveway ceiling. Yeah. Um, and then your micro surfing is a little bit thicker, and you go to surface treatment, and your asphalt is your larger. And it all depends on the aggregate that's used as well as the uh, asphalt. Any other questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, through you, Mayor. <clears throat> Just a couple of questions, Evan. Uh, generally, uh, under the uh, road resurfacing, uh, the very first one, uh, where it's uh, 2023 final budget, um, so you allotted 35000 for 2023. Uh, nine, just over nineteen was spent. Uh, is that? Am I reading that correctly? So thank you and through yet yeah, that is to date that is to October or November 15th so not necessarily all the bills haven't paid okay but, yeah you okay. can probably speak to that yeah yeah, yeah no that's through you Maryland I thought that is correct um I think that is sort of an asset management plan number if I do believe um and we usually that's where we, if we were purchasing culverts and stuff like that so we do have it's sort of you wait to see at the end of the year how much you used up and then what fund you have, you can buy some culverts. So that whole sort of purchase some culverts can be installed next year to sort of okay. That's so, the term for that. <laughs> okay. So so those any savings, uh uh and then so I'm just I'm still looking at the same line. Yeah. Uh so you you're projecting that uh twenty twenty four is gonna be thirty five thousand. Um so the savings from the twenty twenty three and the actual up to that point given in another month's work let's say there's a savings of five thousand at the end of the year does that five thousand get rolled over or does it go to what you just mentioned Devin? so 
Thank you, Attorney. So Evan is correct that some of the amounts in the budget are based on our asset management plan. So we actually look at the cost to replace our assets. And that includes the we have one bridge and the culverts as well. So that amount, there's their 50 year useful life. 50 year useful life. So it's spread over 50 years essentially. So any and that was recently I brought a report to council to transfer any surplus to reserve. So we literally go through line by line of the budget and transfer any surpluses. So anything un, that isn't spent would go into reserve for future use for that department. Keeping in mind that you have to look at the overall spending too. So if sometimes things are over, it can be a departmental transfer in the end. But yes, we definitely look to, you know, the amounts are included in there as an amount we should through our asset management plan, planning that has been done, but anything underspent will go in reserve. There's never not a need to buy a couple of culverts for every road. So yeah. whatever's left, you can spend very easily just to make sure we have stuff ready for the future. Well, go ahead, Councilor Beer. Thank you. Two more questions. Uh, so under the uh, bridge culvert road reconstruction, second line reconstruction of Bessie Avenue South, I didn't see any um, numbers in there. Was that to do with, um, I know there was conversation earlier in the year uh, about Bessie, uh, then, you know, assuming the road and that sort of thing. Is this, is this, am I referring yeah. apple to apple? No, thank you and through you. So that is actually Bessie Avenue North. Okay. Bessie Avenue South was a road that was completed in, in 2022. So that will come off. In fact, that could have come off. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't any spending in 2023 on Bessie Avenue South. It, the road in question is North. <clears throat> an unassumed road. Okay. One more question. One more. Go ahead. No, it's, this is the time to ask questions. Uh, just uh, for your proposed work for 2024, uh, I didn't see Cemetery Road, anything uh, to do with Cemetery Road as far as assisting with that runoff. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you Mayor Lambside. <laughs> yeah, so that was another one that will be picked up within the operating. <laughs> We had a discussion there on site and stuff like that. So that will be take care of that time. And if any questions regarding the cemetery road, I do believe it's going to be resurfaced two or three years from now, sort of thing. But with smaller projects like that, such as Mill Line, where it's a smaller value, it's the same as the job. Great. Thanks, Al. Okay, any other questions? I think we can move along. Thank you. Through you, it would be Dylan next. Yes. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, like first of many times, I think I get to talk to you guys this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so running through my capital budget, um, our our 01, our 6001 uh, truck was completed, so that uh, there'll be no um, pickup trucks this year. Um, the community halls, parks, land improvement. Um, so that is a combination of our asset management plan um, figure as well as the previously um, approved $200,000 for open spaces um, <coughs> through a previous report and you'll see later on this agenda is where I've um, laid out a proposed implementation plan for um, those works. Um, building improvements um, again is, is just our asset management figure you'll see a report later on um, the details some of the works will be included in that um, through our community halls um, a figure for our portion of the dedicated mechanics structure um, and a value for um, future replacement of pickups and um, the uh, uh, the second year portion of the generator, which was approved in 2023 for the Lakehurst Hall. So that's year two. Next year, we will, uh, or in 2024, we'll look to do a tender later in the year to get an accurate final price so that in, for the 2025 budget, we can include the, the balance of whatever will need to be funded to install that generator in 2025. Um, and then our, our standard IT um, value for our um, capital is there as well. Okay, thank you very much, Dylan. Does anyone have any questions about the second Dylan's presentation? I guess I do have. I 
have one for sorry, I have one for the expert. You will notice, just based on the conversation with Evan there, um, that my actuals are um, quite substantially lower than the budgeted figures. That is because we've got a couple big outstanding projects still. The playground is starting tomorrow at Odenang. Um, the Galway Kitchen and our building improvements and some other land improvements at the Odenang Park as well are are outstanding. So through the balance of the year, we'll see those numbers grow substantially. Thank you for getting ahead of me on that. I can ask you about $317,000. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councilman Graber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, happy to report it started yesterday. Yes, the, the oh, hole did so. start. I saw you there. I, yeah, I, I had a few calls. I had a few calls. So what's going on? So anyway, that's good. It's great to see. Yes. Uh, and people are happy. So yeah. I've, I've received uh, quite a few calls. They're, they're pretty happy with that. Awesome. Uh, one question uh, as for the second line for the community hall parks land improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, so the 155 uh for the final budget that you budgeted for 2023 36 000, the actuals up to november 15th uh so the remainder is just over 100 000 remaining does that again roll as, as you mentioned earlier right so thank you and through you yes it would be but i, I believe there's some larger invoices still coming but anything mm -hmm. unspent would definitely go into reserve okay it does not roll over as you know, added to the 2024 budget, it's there to offset costs as needed. Go ahead. Yeah, I do. I do have an additional comment. Like Donna said, yes, it would be carried forward. Yes, there's the the playground is a significant one. One that we Donna and I chatted about briefly before is actually our Cavendish brick project. We kind of ran out of weather, and our contractor stuck on another job. So that is one that would go to reserves to be moved forward for next year. Um, to be a project completed for next year, but not something that would have to be re-raised. We would just, those funds will be carried forward as unspent from this year. Thank you, Neil. Any other questions? We can move on to administration. Thank you, and through you. So, so far for the administration budget under capital, we have put our $5,000 amount, which is in keeping with the asset management plan. And that is for the replacement or any IT requirements. Um, so we did just to let you know, because that was a commitment as part of the 2023 budget that we start replacing desktops with laptops in order to save some licensing fees. So we have replaced five desktops in 2023 and three licenses as a result of that. So that's a good news story. Mm -hmm. So our commitment is to continue to replace those. And also, you will see, and I, there is a, a document coming up on that, but we did get some pricing. The concept drawings were completed for the addition to the municipal office. And that S, Class C estimate is over $3 million for the addition. So, but there is a document, I know that was shared with you about that. But just to let you know, that is in keeping with the cost of bills and renovations at the moment, unfortunately. Okay. Any other anyone have any questions for administration? Not seeing none. Okay, we can move on now to fire and rescue. Thank you, Mayor. Through you to council. Um the majority of my stuff is our 10-year rolling stock. Um, we have two rescue pickup rescues uh, for replacement. I have a uh, carry over for a rescue unit for Station 2 in Cavendish that we just uh, we didn't get to with um, trying to get uh, costing back and, and uh, the uh, timeline for these type of vehicles is a year or better almost so um, the likes of Amazon and all those delivery type companies are are eating them up so we kind of went back to the drawing board to see if something else would fit our purpose a little better um, so we're still working on that so that's going to be a, a carryover um, into next year's budget as well or this year's budget coming uh, we have an atv or um in a trailer for replacement for station one in buckhorn um i think we're replacing it with a side by side so that's why the trailer is included as well um and then you'll see our tanker uh money that was 
carrying over into reserves as well, like we're saying. Uh, that used to take a year to get the same type of truck. It's three years now. We were supposed to have it in March. Uh, then we were supposed to have it in October, November, and now it's February, March of 24. So that money is being carried over. And then uh, as everybody before myself has spoke about uh, asset management plan, um, those those numbers, the next three columns are associated with that type of stuff. So that goes with, a, that's our 10, 15 and 20 year um, replacement schedule. So any loose equipment or whatnot that has a five, 10 or 20 year lifespan, um, that money has to be set aside annually to replace that when the time comes. Um, design documents for the Joint Fire Hall and Public Works in Buckhorn, um, that's underway. Uh, Evan and I have a meeting next week, I believe, um, starting that process. And then the, uh, I think that's it actually, and IT is, uh, as Donna spoke before, the, the 5,000. Um, well, yeah, that was last year, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, okay. I'm happy to answer. Any questions from the council? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. No, thank you very much. Uh, just two quick ones. Um, tanker Unit 13, where is that going to go? Uh, yes. yeah, that's what I thought. And um, Building Improvements and Future Replacement. Yes. That again? I will let Donna speak to that actually, then I won't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. You. That's a commitment we um, and once again, asset management planning and just planning for the build in Buckhorn, trying to put money aside for that build. Thank you. You're Very important to have some saved up because getting started costs a lot more than you mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Uh, you piqued my interest uh, as far as uh, mentioning the Amazon and the UPS. Uh, how uh, are the calls for service related to those those companies? It's the sorry through you, Mayor, to your Council Member. The um, they're buying this type of vehicle by the hundreds, and we're, we're looking for a one-off. So the dealerships that we deal with don't necessarily have that vehicle on the lot. So to order one, have it designed and delivered. Is approximately a year, right? So, so it's being snapped up we've, by right. UPS. We've, we've yeah, run out of time to date yeah, so yeah. far to order that vehicle and get what we need. So, we're reassessing whether that is the vehicle we need or not. Okay. Our parameters really dictate what we can actually do with that particular station. So that makes it very limited on what we can have, and I don't want to spend a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars on a vehicle that is of no use to us to fit in that station because we have it for 15 or 20 years so that's kind of the thanks answer your question go ahead councillor cadigan uh, on that same vehicle through you mayor uh it's going to be four-wheel drive obviously yes thank you any other questions for chief Brockway? and through you mayor um to councillor cadigan there's only a couple manufacturers that actually make four-wheel drive there's all wheel drive, four wheel drive, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive. Mm -hmm. So it, it narrows the mark as well. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. No more questions. Go off easy either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Lost my agenda. Can move on. <laughs> We can move on to item 5.2.2, which is Dylan Kosh again, our Director of Recreation and Facilities, their Community Hall Budget request. Awesome. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, before you have my um, traditional annual report, um, we put out a request to the hall boards um, asking for you know, they're kind of wish list, so to speak, but things that would help them benefit run their halls, things that they see as a deficiency, um, you know, that fall outside of your normal operating repairs um, and improvements. Um, so this list, this year's list is a little bit smaller than normal, I would say. Um, so we have right at the top there in green, the generator installation, just for council's information and consideration when approving this, um, these funds. Um, that's there just showing that council's already committed to that. Um, the Lakers Hall made uh, four requests 
swinging doors into the kitchen. We have spoke with the fire department on that and it uh, appears that we can do that. Um, so that would allow them, right now the doors only swing outwards from the kitchen. Um, so they, you know, your traditional paddle style doors that they can go in and out when they've got their hands full of stuff. Um, they don't have to prop the doors open, which is obviously another fire safety type of concern. Um, so staff are supportive of that uh, move. There would be windows installed in those doors so that you can see if there's somebody on the other side. Um, the Lake Crystal also requested replacement of their chairs under our uh, responsibility matrix that uh, council passed uh, back in 2015. Um, furniture is a hull board um, item. So at this time, given the other um, proposed improvements that are underway at Lakehurst Hall, um, I think it would be best to defer that, um, that request. A shower was requested um, in discussions with this, with uh, our uh, a contractor um, and, you know, the fire department is it's not going to be inexpensive to do. The actual lower, the the basement of the hall is actually not accessible. The door widths aren't um, wide enough. There's no openers, um, so it would also work, you know start to trigger septic um, review, obviously as well. So we received a you know a high level estimate from um, one of the contractors we work with regularly of 120,000. Um, the purpose of the showers was to provide an opportunity for people during an outage. To come to the hall and you know clean up, charge your phone, what have you. But obviously, without a generator in place, you can't do that. So, first steps is get a generator in place, and then you know down the road look at to see what would be required. Um, but we do know that'd be a fairly um, in-depth renovation to install that there. Um, you will see here um, sound system storage cabinets. Um, this request has actually been uh, resolved. We had some outgoing um, equipment um, here from the municipality. Um, we were able to repurpose that for their purposes over there um, and so far it's working out for them so um, that is also not uh, included in these funds. Moving along to Cavendish Hall, we've got um, some roof and water damage repair so we've had issues in there in the past with driving snow coming in the roof ridge um, so we've had a contractor out to take a look at that, as well as the necessary repairs for drywall and stucco and stuff on the interior of the hall um, to, you know, replace the ridge vent. Um, what we think is happening is due to the, the venting in the soffits and on the gable ends, it's actually creating a suction into the ridge vent um, and drawing snow in when it's driving a certain direction. Um, so we're hoping to um, fix that. Um, Replacing some flooring, some uh, carpet flooring in the basement there in the back uh, meeting room uh, where the newspaper is and the dartboards are, if you guys are familiar with the hall. Um, replacing that with a similar product that we did up in the main floor um, that I think uh, everybody's been fairly happy with up there. Um, so it's a, a glue down um, luxury vinyl plank product, commercial product, um, and uh, we've received pricing for that as well. Um, the fly lights is a request that actually came from Cavendish, but I'm going to recommend doing it for all halls, is installing some of those UV um, lights with, they've got a glue strip in it, attracts flies, bugs, because every hall has an issue with, you know, flies if they're, you know, they're very diligent at the halls at keeping them clean, um, but I think this will go a long way in, in helping them keep a, a nice clean spot. Um, we're coming down to our Cavendish uh, ball diamond. They've requested to do some infield um work as well as there's uh you know it's been talk in the past about increasing the height of the fencing along the playground um i think we're we need to have some more discussions about what is is necessary there um and get some some solid pricing on that one um i don't know if mayor lamb said if you have anything at all on that or no no um moving along to galway hall we've got um, some hall signs that's been requested um, we've got some uh, pricing for that, so that would go on the actual HVAC fence um, along the road um, facing either side to better show the location of the hall for people as they're um, coming by. Um, some hand dryers for the washrooms. Um, this could be considered a bit of a green initiative, reduce on the waste that the hall produces and um, 
and you know a little bit you know they'd be touchless uh, touchless dryers. Um, so again, to go with the the hall signage around that HVAC unit, a um, little bit of a beautification project that we would do in house ourselves actually. Um, doing some landscaping, we do a raised bed, put some uh, perennial plants around that unit, and kind of uh, spruce it up a little bit further. Um, and a another request we were able to resolve was the lighting request was replacing some of the diffuser lights. We were able to procure those fairly inexpensively in uh, a couple months ago, and we got them installed for the hall, so they're they are completed. Um, so all said and done, um, actually everything in blue are the, my recommended um, requests and all of those fit within our asset management plan figure there of $100,000 in our capital um, capital line up above, um, you saw it earlier. Um, so no additional funds will be requested to this, we'll be just looking for approval to go ahead to do these items. Um, and if we get that, we will get her done. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions of Dylan? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong. Um, I just want to flag the uh, Galway Hall signage, supportive of doing it, um, but I think there's a larger question around signage in general that we'll talk about a little bit later. So that's it for now. For sure. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Franzen, how do you think that? Yeah, uh, two things. Uh, first of all, through you, Mayor, a response to the Deputy Mayor. We did discuss that. Uh, at the meeting yesterday, and I said that uh, the sign may, the proposed sign might be, have to be changed to incorporate the uh, township logo and uh, whatever we decide to do with signage. And they were very cooperative with that. Thank you. Good. And uh, but it, it's not an improved item, but it's just a comment. If, if we're going to put showers in one of our community centers for power outages, we we'll probably have to do them all because the red cross will come once they realize it's in one of them and not in other ones because uh, some of our community centers are in pretty remote areas far more remote than lake herself for sure through you mayor um yeah I'm, that's kind of the uh the theme that we see happen over the years yeah. is one gets it and the other ones also want it cavendish does have a shower already um galway does not galway be a another animal. I'm not sure where they yeah. put one just yet, but <laughs> um, for sure, something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Gatti, you have a question? Two comments. One, just on that, uh, for emergency purposes, we should probably have showers in our community center. It should be something to strive towards, I believe. Uh, I'm also really glad to see the fly lights addressed. The last few times I've been in the Cavendish Hall, it's been embarrassing especially for Louise's funeral. So glad to see something being done. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Brady. Yeah, it's you, Mayor. Just a comment to uh, Councilor Cadigan. Do they have showers at Cavendish? Or? I believe it is shower, yes. So you might not need the fly light then. We still need the fly light, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just a comment. Sorry, quick uh <laughs> was <that> meeting. <laughs> yeah. Quick question. Uh so for the swinging doors at Lakehurst, is it ten thousand dollars for swinging doors? Yeah, through through you, Mayor. Um yes, we we've received a quote on that one. Really? Yeah. Do you think there's a chance for some savings in that or we can certainly it's it the value is right at our purchasing policy threshold. So we certainly would look at getting a couple more, but just for the purposes of this report, we've just got the one rather than pulling everybody out multiple times to quote a job. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, not one comment I have is the Cavendish Bald Land Improvements. I did have a, a talk with someone that does a couple of those and it was like $7,200 just for the crushed brick once you get it all prepped. So it's not gonna be an inexpensive little adventure. We'll see how that goes. Okay. I'm just here looking for a motion to approve the highlighted in court. Anyone have any more questions? Go ahead, Councilor Brader. Um, make a motion to uh, the council receive the report and that council approve the requests recommended by staff. Okay. Do we have a second? I see Councilor Cadigan for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay. 
<laughs> move on now. Bill and Gosh, the Director of Recreation <laughs> Facilities for our open space. Market. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I will uh, spare everybody. I will not read this entire report. Hopefully, everybody has had a, a chance to review it. Um, so, uh, previously, we did have a, a, a resolution passed to look at the Lakehurst Hall uh, lower bowl, um, which there's uh, proposing putting some raised tiered seating, sorry, an amphitheater, um, as well mm -hmm. as I also wanted to, given that that is proposed trail on municipal property, is work in the the trailhead to that into a kind of a single cohesive project rather than trying to tack on and, and work around it down the road. Um, so my proposal is for 2024 is that is our main focus. Um, we've got some very, very, very preliminary um, figures on that and it's in the 150 to 250 range. That's how preliminary we are. Our architect will actually be coming hopefully in January with a uh, concept and some harder numbers for you guys to consider. Um, so I'm, you know, at this time pegging it in the middle at $200,000. Um, so that would be our main focus for the 2024 $200,000 that was committed um, earlier in the year in May. Um, 2025, also alongside that in our, with our open spaces, we just take 2024 and focus a lot of our time on the strategic type recommendations being policies, procedures, best practices, building our foundation. Um, so that when we start getting our boots on the ground with these trails that we have strong background and working documents to base what we're doing off of, you know, gives us more accurate numbers. If we know what type of material we're putting down, how much material, it gives us a more solid foundation to budget figures off of. Um, we'll know what type of equipment council would already be approved by council and what they are looking for in a trail. So that's what we work on in the background that's reflected in my um, work plan for 2024 as well. So main focus for um, funding would be for the Lakers Hall Bowl in 24 um, when working on the background. Then in 25, we would look to um, work on our Lakers Trail, Lakers Trail and our, um, if budget allows, our Adam and Eve Trail, which is on um, BCC property. So we did hear back from the BCC. They are willing to engage in the conversation of, you know, join the trail, whatever, formal negotiations and agreements and stuff would obviously have to be um, signed and uh, determined. Um, but they, they have reached back to me and said they're interested. On that note, every other trail that we reached out, we either did not receive a response for trails on private property or a very hard no, not interested in it. I think somewhat to be expected as you know, traditionally a lot of people aren't overly willing to get a trail on their property. Um, so I'm not considering those trails dead, but more so deferred until a later time, perhaps a different approach with open spaces. Um, when they see the trail develop, they may, they may garner more of an interest on that. Um, 2026 is kind of a year of um, uncertainty. It is um, in within the um, recommendations to do um, some more work at Odenang Park, being pathways around the park. Um, the problem with that being is our archaeological site in the middle of it. The pathways were estimated by, I think, designed to be $132,000. Um, we received some pretty preliminary numbers for so the, the archaeological site at this stage, if we're to do anything, has to be completely excavated and cataloged. And we're, you know, we've seen some numbers in the 75 to 100 plus range to excavate that area. Um, so that that needs to be discussed further on if council has that appetite um, to do to put those pathways in. Um, um, sorry, bear with me for one moment. The we would also like to do, I think, in 25. I lost my. Um, in 20, sorry, 26, we're also looking at starting to implement our open spaces working groups. Um, so this would be where council could dictate a subset of the recommendations for um, to get some subject matter experts in um, and evaluate the recommendations for the next term of council. So um, there, there's, I think, 85 recommendations in the whole plan. Um, we obviously can't tackle them all at once. This is a good, that would be a good opportunity. Um, so late 25, we would start, you know, developing what the working groups looks like for implementation in 26. Their job would be to 
get to the end of council's term with a subset of recommendations for the next term of council to um, to work on. Um, there is a big um, matrix there with all the recommendations laid out in kind of the order that um, I think best fits um, with some estimated timing and uh, and costs in that. As we get through um, to next, you know, to future budget years, um, you know, tender prices and stuff as necessary um, would be included for some more accurate figures. At this stage, budgeting for something in 2026, we all know that that's going to change fairly significantly at this point in time. So we do have some some order of magnitude type numbers in there um, for council's consideration. We are fully um, committed to sticking within that $200,000 um, that was previously approved. So what we can get done in that, um, we will. Thank you very much, Dylan. Anyone have any questions of Dylan? Go ahead, Mr. Your Mayor, uh, just a comment. Uh, is, is there no way that we can get one into that lower vault? For sure, through you, Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm certain there's funding out there. I know there's a lot of recreational funding um, these days. What we kind of need is we need Traditionally, when you get to funding, they want some very hard numbers and a proposed plan. So we need those concept drawings, we need those estimates, and potentially even um, tender pricing. Um, Rachel works very di diligently to, you know, search out grants and look for grants. So I have every faith that we can, we can certainly we can at least find partial funding as well as some opportunities, I'm sure, within the community to get some some assistance. Just a further comment to uh, the table. Uh, the funds that uh, would be available at province or federal level eventually. Uh, there is an election 2026, so I'm sure there's an awful lot of pressure on the provincial government now to pro provide more infrastructure funding to municipalities to hear it on the news all the time. So I think that uh, there may be something coming down in the very near future. For sure. Through you, Mayor, I think it, you know, we would definitely want to focus on getting the funding. Um, funding for as many projects as possible. The more we can fund, the longer we can, or the further out we can stretch, you know, council's dollars and get more completed. If we certainly can accelerate it due to funding, by all means, we will do our best to do that. Thank you, Bill, and I will start that conversation and be piecing it next Wednesday. Perfect. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Thank you, Mayor Lampton. Um, thanks, Dylan. Really good report. Um, glad to see that we've got an implementation plan for the open spaces. Uh, I had two comments. Um, one was actually more PR. I know that Rachel is planning on putting projects that are ongoing onto our website, and some of these obviously will go up there. I think it's important to do not only what we're, or to show not only what we're doing this year, but some of the future projects. And the reason for that is uh, what we're doing in the immediate near future is all in Buckhorn. And so I think we want others to see that Detman Park is on the radar and other things are on the radar. So, I, you know, it's there, but we just need to make sure that the public understands we're working our way through the list and the priorities. Through you, Mayor, to Deputy Arnstrom. That, that I'm glad you brought that up. That got jogged my memory again. So one of the 2024 projects is, that I want to work on is working with the County of Peterborough through their ESRI, ESRI suite of software to develop a trail um, trail portal. And I obviously we don't have a big trail network right now, but I want to use that as a kind of coming soon type feature. Um, you could put you know dates on it, you know some uh, preliminary map drawings on it and stuff. Um, and obviously, as the trail network is developed, it would turn into the actual map and, and access access portal for the trail network. So I, I think that would be another another avenue to help promote that and show what's coming. Absolutely. And we could put existing trails on there so that they see there are already tons of trails up in Cavendish and Gulf. Sure. Um, thank you. The second question was, um, I know you're recommending a trails committee in 2026. Um, Will we have a uh, staff report and recommendation regarding a uh, revived PRCAC sometime in, in the new year? Is that how are we going to make, you know, tackle that question as to whether we want uh, that committee re reformed? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am not aware of the last resolution that was passed by council. Is there something? That perhaps Jesse can help us there. I think we just said that we would relook at. Not a time frame. No, we didn't. Well, New Year. We said New Year. We didn't 
identify a path forward to figure out what we what that discussion would look like. I mean, I think it would be helpful to have um, Dylan's input on that because a lot of the work that that committee did culminated in their master plan and their open spaces master plan, which appears to be being implemented by our staff. I mean, I have my own opinions on this, but I think it would be helpful just to uh, have input from Dylan. I don't know that it's a report from him. Maybe it's from the clerk's office, but I think we need a basis on which to review the need or not need for that committee. I, I think we certainly can discuss between Donna and, and Jesse and I and, and bring a report forward in like Q1 of 24. Without, I don't want to create a lot of work. <laughs> so that's not the intent, but just a basis on which we can have the conversation. Sure. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Okay, Councillor Franzen? Um, uh, through you, Mayor, and thank you for jogging my memory as well, Ms. Uh, Armstrong. Um, uh, we were talking a while ago about pickleball in Galway, and you suggested that uh, we may be looking at uh, putting uh, a pickleball court in uh, the Detman Park. Uh, um, what kind of time frame were you uh, suggesting, Bill? Through you, Mayor, to you, Councillor Franzen. Um, the Detman Park um, concept plan, which would include those types of talks, um, we've got scheduled for 2025. Okay. So that was the time frame for that. We'd, uh, you know, look at having somebody come out, consult with the community, the whole board there, the ratepayer associations, and see what would, um, what the community would like to see up there. That goes a big blank slate up there, I would say. So. Yeah. Certainly okay. seems like the three pickleball courts at the Cavendish Community Center are very well used. It's crowded. Councillor Raber got a question. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> under the uh, the 2024 uh, recommendations, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, alongside the development of the Lakehurst Hall <laughs> Lower Bowl, are you anticipating at least getting started on? either the Lakers Trail and or the Lower Bowl, like clearing it and that sort of thing? Through you, Mayor, um, to Councillor Braybrook. Yes, the anticipation is that that, you know, subject to council approval here was that that project would be completed in 2024. Oh, completed. That, that would be the goal, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hopefully in January, we've got those concept drawings and, and then we can get into um, contract documents and procurement. Perfect. Perfect. Maybe like your lofty goal. <laughs> okay, any other questions? No. Do we have anyone interested in making a motion? Motion in our package. I can read about our open Go ahead, Councilor Braver. I'd like to make a motion that Council receive the report uh, and the Council approve the proposed open spaces implementation plan and further the Council approve. The proposed spending estimates subject to formal procurement procedures and further, the council directs staff to investigate any possible grant opportunities that may facilitate the acceleration of the implement, implementation of the plan. Great, thank you for that motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Do you have to be Armstrong for a seconder? Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Dylan. Okay, we can move on to Deputy Mayor Armstrong, Section 5.2.4, which is a capital budget request for signage. Uh, thank you, Ron Um, First of all, forget the 100,000. That's kind of a stupid number. It's too high. <laughs> but let me back up. The context of this is uh, around signage. Um, currently, we have as you know, three community centers, we have a welcome center, we've got two libraries, we've got parks and beaches, we have public boat launches, we have two rinks, we have a ball field and on and on. And we do not have consistent signage at all of those. So uh, at some point, I, I think when we rebranded as Municipal Trent Lakes and created the logo, we never really completed the full launch of that. And so, we know that in, we'll see that in, in uh, 
uh, in Rachel's report, she's looking for some rebranding. In my opinion, we don't need rebranding per se. We've got a great logo. We've got a name that we don't want to change again because people are still stalwartly refusing to call themselves Trent Lakes, they're Galway or Cavendish or Harvey. <laughs> so no point changing again. But I think what we what we do need is a relaunch of it um, so that we make it prominent, we promote it, and we use it consistently. Right now, all we've got are trucks that have the logo on it, our website and our social media are branded, our stationery is branded, but we don't have it in our physical locations. And I think that's really an important step we need to take to you know, get our identity, promote it, et cetera, pride of place, all of that. So uh, I know that Dylan has 5,000 in his budget for a Galway Hall sign. I know that Rachel has 40,000 in her budget for rebranding. And again, we can have the conversation whether it's rebranding or relaunching the existing brand. But I think all of these need to be looked at from one perspective, and we need to start to have a plan to put the same sign at you know, Cavendish Community Center, Galway, uh, Lakehurst, et cetera. We have to be sensitive because there's a very lovely, for instance, Cavendish Community Center sign there that the people who built it are very proud of. So we can't get rid of that. But I think we need to put one there in addition that has Trent Lakes, you know, you spell it Trent Lakes, logo, et cetera. Um, uh, some of you will remember that at our quad council meeting, uh, Chief Knott uh, had wrong directions and couldn't find the place because we didn't have very good signage, aside from his having bad directions. But there's a perfect example. It's pretty easy. To, I think he drove by, right by it. So that's the impetus behind this request. I don't know how much money we need if we can use some of the 40,000 in Rachel's budget towards this, um, the 5,000 in Dylan's budget. And I think we had some reserves somewhere down of around $20,000 left over from uh, whatever it is, can't remember, RTO8 or something, Trail Town, uh, that I think we ought to get started on doing that. And there ought to be one point person uh, to make sure that the brand is consistent and that we have an implementation strategy for that. So that's the end of my long speech. And 100,000, I don't know, I picked it out of the air. It's way too high. Uh, I think think you said, Donna, that every $100,000 uh, in increased taxes is a 1% increase in the tax rate. Don't wanna do that. But maybe it's an additional 20, $25,000 on top of the 40,000 on top of the 5,000. So that's my pitch. <laughs> Councilor Prince. I do support uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong's proposal somewhat, <laughs> but I, I believe that we could do this in stages. Whenever a sign has to be replaced, we replace it with our logo and uh, whatever signage the council has approved. But that way we, we may stretch it over three or four years and that wouldn't have much of an impact to our budget at all. Dylan wants to comment on that first. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, through you, Mayor to Council. Um, so we we definitely have got a few different people coming at this. Rachel's obviously got a rebranding in the open spaces. We've got a uh, sign strategy as one of the items. So I think it's like important to um, not get the cart before the horse, and that you know, Rachel, if 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 rebranding is something Council's interested in, that's something we need to do first and then develop a signage strategy and then purchase it. Whether or not that can all occur in a time frame of 12 months, I'm not entirely sure. Um, once we have it, it's quite easy to implement actual signs. It's, you know, bolts in, bolts out kind of thing. Um, but I think that's kind of the process that council probably wants to, to follow to make sure we're not, you know, duplicating effort and removing stuff that's, like I wouldn't put the Galway Hall sign up per se, if we're gonna look at rebranding and changing our strategy and how we sign things. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Just uh, comments to uh, responses to both of those. I, I sort of agree with Councillor Franson, although I think you have a big impact uh, when you put five signs up all at once, for example. So that's really the promotion part and the relaunching of the brand. So maybe 
you know, you do prioritization um, on that. Um, to Dylan's comment, we do need to have that discussion about whether we're supportive of changing the brand or whether we're just talking about a relaunch. I'm not sure when we have that discussion, <laughs> but we need to have it soon because we're talking, it will delay the implementation of many things if we rebrand. Um, and it also impacts how we spend the money for 2024. So I look to you, Donna, to say, when do we have that discussion? Sure. So and is it today? You. Yes, so thank you, Mr. Yu. Perhaps I can suggest it's in the general government budget that spending and Rachel is prepared to speak to that today. So could we wait and table this mm -hmm. until that budget? Is that okay. fine? That's fine to council. Okay, I think that's a good idea. I just have one other comment there before we move on, because there's some little historical locations in this municipality that are getting completely forgotten. I think we should be considering some historical location signs, like uh, little, the settlement area of Ewan was, it's, there's nothing there anymore. Uh, Fort Irwin, Union Creek, uh, Rockcroft. There's, there's lots of little spots that have just a little historically known as something like that. We put a couple up uh, a few years ago, and I think that kind of went to the wayside. So that could have the new brand, whether it's a local change or not. I think those those little areas are important not to forget. That's why we're all here. Yeah. Good, Councilor Braver. A couple of questions. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, just generally. When we're talking about rebranding, is it like changing logos and that type of thing? Is that included in that? Thank you, and through you. I, I'm not entirely sure, which is why Rachel is prepared to speak to it. Um, I mean, if council wishes, she could do that now if you want. But yeah, it is part of the general government budget. If I get anything confused on this process, I'm going to be lost. So maybe if you don't mind waiting until Rachel has a question. So I'll, I'll rephrase my comment. If if it does include changing the logo and whatnot, I, I wouldn't be in support of that. I think our logo is, is great. I've had many comments from other townships that uh, they really like our logo. And I just don't know whether there's a cost benefit to doing that and whether that'll change anything in the long run. Uh, and to um, Deputy uh, Mayor Armstrong's um, request paper, I'm in support of it. Uh, subject to the processes that uh, are gonna flow out of uh, Rachel's Rachel's office and to Dylan's comments as well. And I think it's, uh, if we roll it out proportionally uh, and as uh, maybe concentrate on the bigger uh, areas, uh, community halls. Because I know that Lakehurst Hall, when you're driving along Lakehurst Road, uh, there's, there's a small little signage, but there's no real impactful Signage. So, so I am in support of, of the uh, request paper, uh, just proportional and depending on costing as well. So, so perhaps a, a solution to this conversation is we wait till general government. So, yeah. uh, entertain a motion to defer a decision on this until we move to the next motion to defer until general government yes. discussion. Do I have a seconder for that motion, Councilor Prancy. Any other conversation? I'm seeing no hand. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. On to 5.2.5 of our agenda, which is Dylan Koch, our Director of Recreation and Facilities. Can you please speak to the manager? Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this uh, budget request is for the replacement of our um, zero turn lawnmower, um, as well as the procurement of a um, leaf vacuum trailer i'm going to call it the official name is escaping me right now it's essentially a two cubic yard trailer that tows behind your lawnmower with a separate motor and it helps suck up the leaves so they're not raking them um so we've uh done six seasons on or more we're about uh, 900 hours of um runtime now and the service life right out of the manual is about a thousand hours um we knew originally um that the um asset replacement timeline in it was going to be longer than what was going to be um, necessary, um, but we decided we would see kind of how it made out. Um, this year, we budgeted, I think, about $2,500 for um, maintenance and repairs, and I think we're about close to five. We had to replace um, half the hydraulics on it. Um, other half is still original, um, so it's hard to say it could go next year um, as well as not knowing when the motor is going to give us up. Um, 
and that's been increasing over the last few years. Um, the, the maintenance costs have increased significantly over the last three, I would say, um, progressively culminating in this year. Um, so this this budget request is to um, replace that mower um, and hopefully um, amend the asset management um, plan moving forward for it um, to be in kind of in a five-year <clears throat> replacement schedule. Um, we're, we're looking for a bit, something basically you know similar to what we have now to continue um, the type of equipment we have. We were able to utilize a loaner this year for you know we would have been down probably 25, 35 percent of the season if it wasn't for our relationship with our, our dealership and they were able to provide us a, a loaner um, for the use of the summer to continue our level of service. Um, we would look at getting rid of the existing one. I don't think it's worth trying to keep it and you know and end up in another catastrophic repair um, and then having to divest of it in a non-working fashion. Right now, it can be sold as functioning. Um, so I think that's the the best course of action action to take on that. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Anyone council have any questions? Hearing no more. I just have a one little question. Have you replaced all the bore deck bearings? Because that's usually the first thing you have to replace. Um, bearings, um, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. It goes in annually with for service, and um, it's all been serviced through the dealer, and they they work really well with us, and you know, recommending things that need to be done on it. Um, it does a lot of work. It's going a lot all day, every day in the summertime. So um, it certainly gets beat up. Yeah, there's a lot of wear parts on one. Yeah. You know, I have something similar. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor Brewer. Uh, but uh, make a motion to uh, approve the request. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that motion? The Councilor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? And seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay. We can move on now to section five point three of our. Agenda. General government. We can go to 5.3.1. Donna Taggart or CA Treasurer. Would you like to speak to this section? Yes, thank you, Mr. Yu. So, just to note before we start, you will see that all of the draft budgets presented to you today have work plans associated with them. So, the work plans are presented as a way to show just some of the work being undertaken by departments. It does not reflect all of the work being undertaken and um, often not the daily work encompassed in each of those departments. So any additional work being requested throughout the year impacts these work plans as well. So, and could result in some of this work being delayed, some of the work plans being delayed. So that the documents are for your information. Uh, departments are prepared to speak to those work plans if council has any specific questions on them but they're, they're really just to reflect the spending in each department budget and the plans. For myself, including all of that, certainly made this a three sleep document. <laughs> but thank you very much for that. It's, it's nice to realize how much all our staff really does do. It's, it's a lot of documentation, but it's well worth it. Thank you very much for including this. So thank you for you. So we're going to start with the general government summary page, if that's okay. Thanks, Bianca. Um, so it shows a 2024 draft budget increase for the general government department of zero point decrease, sorry, of 0 0.79 percent or sixteen thousand three hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty-nine cents. And it also reflects a um, tax levy decrease requirement of 288,501 in this department. So this decrease is due to the completion of the council strategic planning projects that was budgeted in 2023. And also there's been an increase in the bank account interest revenue in, for this department and that is included. So the general government budget now also reflects revenue for that for work completed by our corporate services department for shoreline sales and administrative work that go along with this goes along with this. So the reven that revenue was previously included in the other protection services budget. So it is now we've also included some revenue for sale of property as well this year, which is new. 
So we're trying to really enter uh, a situation where departments, we're, we're making sure that the right work is in the right department and that includes the revenue associated with it. So if, when we start the general government budget, um, actually I would ask that Jesse speaks to the council accountability and the election portion, please. Uh, thank you for you. I don't think there's too much changes happening in either of those um, budgets. Um, we removed the mayor's budget, the $3,000 for 2024, as well as moving those advertising requests to um, the general government um, section of the budget uh, for the economic development coordinator to look after. Um, and the election and accountability officer ones are fairly standard. We just budget the same pretty much every year and carry anything over to reserves um, specifically for the 2026 election or for any um, larger uh, accountability um, investigations that we could have in the future. So. Okay, thank you very much, Jesse. Does anyone have any questions of Jesse regarding that? little section there. Okay, Councilor Brown. Yeah, I, I do have uh, for you, Mayor. I'm just wondering, if, is this the time to deal with the Kim Mount Medical Center? The request? Yeah, so thank you to you. Perhaps, yes, for, we'll just move on if you don't <laughs> to the administration yeah. portion of the budget and we sure, will definitely sure. get there. Yeah. So the administration portion, does include a wage increase in keeping with the discussions earlier um, regarding because we do have a QP contract for you in this year um, and all staff get the same increase essentially. So, so there is an accessibility initiative. You'll see a new budget for that under administration for 15,000. This is not new spending. This is spending that we did allocate from the council IT software budget, but we have separated that. Uh, we do have increased substantially the legal budget, and I have did discuss that a bit at the beginning. The EDP services, there is a portion now that the library will be paying for. I know we are over budget in 2023 in that line item, but the library has committed in 2024 to budgeting for that service on their own. That did used to happen a few years ago, um, and so that's going to start up again. And um, just to let you know that there are under computer hardware software some accruals that need to happen. So some of the things we pay in 2023 will be for 2024. So that budget over it showing there will be reduced because of that. Um, so yeah, I think the next thing would be to look at the medical centers. So the Buckhorn Regional Health Center, there is an addition of $50,000 for uh, administrative support, which is offset from a uh, reserve transfer for that facility, which is underspending, but mostly due to donations for the work there. And um, yes, if we move to the next thing, if we if, if that's okay for you, the next um, would be the rebranding. So the economic development and actually the economic development in itself that's spending for 2020. So I'll let you just get to that. Um, thank you, and through you, Mayor. Um, starting with economic development, there are multiple actions out of the economic development, tourism, and recovery strategic plan to be completed next year. Uh, the community improvement plan is underway and is estimated to be completed around the end of March. Afterwards, it will be promoted to those eligible throughout the rest of the year. Uh, the majority of the other actions are for myself to connect with different groups throughout the community to look for opportunities to support their initiatives including businesses, organizations, and community groups. For communications, as you know, there's now an internal and external strategy. So actions will really begin in 2024. Internally, there will be basic training to staff, an internal monthly newsletter will be sent out and internal documents and resources will be created to increase efficiency. Externally, there will be a monthly newsletter launched to the public, the creation of best practices and procedures which will align with the rebrand that I will mention in a moment and a comprehensive website audit. Finally, for marketing, our main focus will be hiring a consultant to take on creating a brand for the municipality, which would happen in the first half of the year. 
Uh, I would like to launch this new brand in the last half of the year with a marketing campaign that highlights Trent Lakes as a place to live, work, and play. Um, I have a spiel for the rebrand, but I'm not <laughs> sure if there's any questions for Ekadev or communications before I do that. Thank you for hearing my brand. Can't really have any questions. So go ahead, Councilor Brown. Yeah, I, I just have a question on the community improvement. Uh, uh, if there's any consideration to include uh, Kin Mount in the community improvement. Through you, Mayor. Sorry, was that for the community improvement plan? Yes, it is. So thank you and through you. We're going to actually ask Adele just to give us an update on the community improvement plan because part of the discussion today, I wanted to let you know that you'll see that budget has been moved to the planning budget because once again, we're trying to focus the work on where it's being done. So Adele is able to provide an update on the community improvement plan if you would like that. Okay. Falls in with that question, please. <laughs> Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are working on the CIP. We got a late start to the project. Uh, the consultant has been working with the project team, and we've been looking at other areas. That was part of the tour we took initially with the consultant to go to the various areas, such as Kinmount. And um, the consultant will be preparing a presentation to council on why some of the areas we've looked at, but are not including in the CIP area. So maybe we can leave that for uh, the presentation by the consultant, but we did take a look at all the areas that would have been settlement areas within our official plan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Adele. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Hi, through you, Mayor. It's just a, a comment uh, to Rachel. Uh, under, under the initiative, uh, just back to your, your chart, uh, the Economic Development Tourism uh, Recovery Strategic Plan. Um, one, in, one in particular that I sort of keyed in on was the develop criteria for the members to ensure that the right people are represented in the, on the committee. So it's the choosing the committees and whatnot, whether it be HAC, or the EAC, the, the new committees. I think it's important to always remind ourselves because I know I've received a lot of feedback from uh, several uh, constituents and, and organizations and whatnot uh, as far as engaging uh, as opposed to just receiving input uh, and that sort of thing. And, and what I see is as engagement that would fit, you know, right into this and and we could draw on if we are, we are trying to uh, populate our HAC and EAC committees uh, that we do, uh, for instance, the heritage and or the environmental, that we do have subject, subject matter experts that we can engage and, and they're part of our community. Um, so I think it's important just to be mindful of that. And, and, and I think you know where, where the majority of that, that, that's coming from, but, but I think it's important to remind ourselves that, that we should engage them and, and, and draw on their experiences. You know, it's not to say that we're going to listen to 100% and take 100%, but we need their input as far as to uh, staff these committees properly and to have them run effectively and, and, and that sort of thing. So. Thank you very much, Dr. Pimmer. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, just building on your comment, I think much like the PRCAC discussion, we need to have the discussion as to whether or not we're going to revive that committee in the new year. And so I think that's part of, I think that's what your work plan is meant to say is that when you say relook at the existing terms of reference uh, if, and update if required. So I'm assuming something will be coming from your area uh, and the we clerks have, perhaps to take a look at whether that committee is. I think the clerk would like to mention something. Yeah, sure. Uh, through you, Marilyn said it's on page two of the corporate services work plan as well. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. Any other questions? Any other comments? Um, through you, Mayor. So, to talk about the rebrand, um, I know the word rebrand um, isn't always clear to everyone what exactly that means. Um, so, the term brand and logo are often used interchangeably, but they're not the same. 
So a brand is a set of features that distinguishes one organization from another. A logo is only one component of a brand. Um, other components include guidelines for templates, typography, color palettes, the brand's voice, and more. Um, the municipality has a logo and we renamed to the municipality of Trent Lakes, but we don't actually currently have a brand identity. Um, so because of this, when I create content, I don't have these components to utilize. And although I have chosen my guidelines to follow to attempt consistency for the municipality since I began my role, the content is not as effective when there's no brand behind it. So I think having a rebrand going into 2024 would be perfect timing. For one, we have just created a communication strategy, so more content will be distributed than ever before. Having a brand will support my role in allowing all content to be cohesive and of high quality. <clears throat> I am also now working on action items out of the ECDEV and tourism plan, um, and it is not just residents that we are targeting. Uh, we have a goal to increase tourism and become a four-season destination. The creation of a brand will help us convey that moving forward and bring pride to our community. My vision for the rebrand would be for the consultants to look at things such as our mission, our vision, our strategies, and create a brand that signifies our goals as a municipality. The consultants would then create guidelines for all employees to follow when creating content. Um, I understand there's concern about changing um, the logo since it has been in place for 10 years and so we could consider something like what is called a soft rebrand. So we would stay the municipality of Trent Lakes, we would keep our logo, but we would still have consultants come in and create a brand identity that fits within that logo, um, which could help us with the marketing launch. Okay, thank you very much Rachel. Any other questions or comments for Rachel? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, well, thank you, Rachel, for that. That was helpful. Um, so two things. I'd also like to go on record saying, don't change the logo, don't change the name. <laughs> like, like, let's use that and leverage it because it's already embedded. So we've got something to start with rather than a clean sheet of paper. But the other thing I wanted to say is I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I think I understand what you know the, the uh, engine, the tools behind a brand are. I'm kind of surprised that we don't have that from when we created the logo and rebranded, you know, color schemes and templates and, you know, font sizes and all those sorts of standards that you, you have to ensure that there's consistency uh, across everything that's public facing. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised. So I guess it's a question, do we not have any of that? And if we don't, um, I, I don't see it as a huge project because a lot of it's there. It's really somebody taking what we have, standardizing it and embellishing it so that you have you know, the, the uh, tools and resources to be able to move forward with your communications. Through you, Mayor, uh, thank you. I, as far as I know, we only have the, the logo um, and that was all that was technically implemented when, when our brand changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. That's sterling. Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Thank you, through through you, Mayor. Uh, thanks very much for that, uh, Rachel. Uh, I was just wondering. Uh, I, I know you're mentioning consultants and and whatnot uh, to assist with the rebranding. I'm just wondering, um, are there any previous uh, consultant reports that we can draw on and to build on uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong's comments as far as you know previous are there any other plans that we can draw on and then you could work work your magic and your expertise to to draw from that as opposed to constantly going to consultants uh, i mean we had the mcsweeney report uh i mean there's a lot like all our other strategic plans and whatnot there's a lot of branding within that that you could extract i'm thinking me not being how many experience in that depth, but I'm just I'm just wondering if you could just draw on your expertise and look reviewing those previous documents that we've spent money on and time on and that sort of thing that you can extract and, and put your spin on it so to speak. Through you Mayor, um, I, I definitely could. The main thing that I was concerned about with rebranding uh, on my own would be the graphic design piece, but if we are to keep the logo um, and it's more towards the color palettes, the voice and tone of our writing. That is something that I could do internally if need be. Great, thank you. Any other questions? 
of a comment. I think this is one of the reasons right here where we have that position that we are in right now. I think that this is what we've needed to do all along. We sometimes get the cart before the horse and we don't have the documentation to back it up. So I think it's time to get all the standards and things in together. And I do love the idea of the live, work and play. I use that all the time in my own <laughs> life. So I'm gonna live, work and play here. Go ahead, Deputy Marshall. Yeah, thank you, Mary Lampson. Um, I'd like to do two things. First is just to uh, determine whether we have consensus across the council to keep the LEAP logo and the municipality of Red Lakes. Certainly, I'm in favor of keeping that logo. I like yeah. that logo. Just, just, I'm ambivalent. I could change the logo. Okay. Yeah, I just got new bell shirts, so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it. Okay. So I think you got your direction yeah, there. Yeah, thank I think you. we like the logo. Um, the it's second reasonable. thing I'd like to suggest is that we redirect we use only a minimal amount of that forty thousand dollars for a graphics consultant um, and the remainder of the money we use towards implementing a relaunch of the brand uh, which could include signage and other things that in fact are public facing uh, so i guess that would probably need to be a specific motion do you want it's in the budget it's just a question of how the monies are actually directed can I just make a comment before yep. we make a motion? Mm -hmm. um, a, a lawyer from Graphics and Design, she designed our logo. I'm wondering if we shouldn't consult with her. She's very local and uh, she could give us some ideas and that would be relatively low cost without going out to an outside consultant. Good, good thinking. And I think that uh, Councilor Yeah, through you, you Mary, just a comment as well. Uh, to build on Deputy Mayor Armstrong's comment uh, as far as the signage and whatnot. Uh, and to your comment, Rachel, saying if we are going to keep the logo and whatnot, we wouldn't really have to engage any sort of sort of graphic uh, design and that sort of thing. We would have that. Uh, so and I and I would like to I would like to see any sort of money savings to go to you know a signage uh, sort of initiative and, and that sort of thing. So. And then you just work your magic and rolling from from all the all the previous documents. Through you, Mayor. Um, I think things like typography and color palettes that would go along with this brand is more on the graphic design um, side of things, which I don't have um, as much experience in. So I think I would be more comfortable if we were to have that graphic design expertise. In, in part. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Do you need a motion? Sorry, yeah. do you need a motion so for that? Thank you, and through you. So I guess it would be better just to clarify council's wishes in this regard. So if council are looking for, and keeping in mind we're planning a few service delivery money for this, so it's not a tax levy impact, but if you're looking to spend the 40000 only and, and having staff work within that parameter, I guess the um, indication is that you would prefer as much internal work as possible to be done. And then we would look at using any underspent funding to look at as many signs as possible. And we could definitely increase that by the, it's $21,959 for the, the money that we didn't spend this year. So we could consider if, you're, if you would like staff to increase that budget, taking it from reserve of the $21,959 keeping within the parameters of that spending and trying to come up with the best possible way to move forward looking at graphics and we will there'll be some restrictions if we have to externally and, and get quotes and that type of thing to stay within a purchasing policy but does that make sense to you mm -hmm. yeah yeah it sense. It makes sense to me okay deputy mayor Armstrong. Uh, uh, thank you um yeah, if you're fine with that direction without a motion, that's fine with me. Um, I just want to reiterate, so we'd be looking at, you'll need some for a graphics consultant, I don't know, up to $10,000, let's say five or $10,000. So the remainder plus the 21,000. So we're talking about oh, roughly $50,000, which could be used towards signage and public facing uh, things. So I'm gonna roll in my request here. Do you think we need an additional Ten or twenty thousand dollars to make a meaningful impact in that, or do you think we're okay 
with just the you know, 61,000, 50, 50, uh, dollars let's say. I think that's a question. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. And just to clarify, I, it would be helpful to have a motion. Okay. So if you, if you don't mind, the additional spending for additional signage, I don't know the answer to that, really, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so I'm not sure. You know, from my point of view, if you're not changing the logo, we have a lot of signs already that are in existence, but would continue to be so. We might want to change some of the font sizes, some of the wording on it, but they already exist. Like when you come into this township, you see a sign almost everywhere that says "Welcome to Trend Lakes." Our logo's on it, so we can maybe just modify stuff. So I don't think you're going to have a huge amount of initial. I would like, I mean, it'll be ongoing. We'll have to change signs as we go as well. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thank you. And just to clarify, back to the request, which is community centers, community halls, libraries. Mm -hmm. So I think we are talking about, you know, yeah, new ones that would be uh, in place, you know, names, signs, significant signs. The words are escaping. <laughs> I need that second cup of tea. Um, so I'll make a motion then that. Uh, within the general administration budget for uh, economic development, we utilize uh, the forty thousand dollars set aside for rebranding. Re uh, say no more than ten thousand for consulting fees, and the remainder plus twenty one thousand something something from reserves be utilized for the development of signage and other public facing. Uh, branded displays. I'll get a second or I think some conversation. Do you want to that motion? Yes. <clears throat> have a second or do we have any conversation? Go ahead, Councilor. Uh, uh, just repeating conversation that uh, was at the Galway Hall. Uh, they, they don't mind us putting our logo on that, but uh, Galway Hall has to be prominent in the signage. And I think we'd uh, be looking at that at all of our community centers, that the emphasis should be on the location of the community center. Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Sure, you know, just a comment. Yeah, I agree with Councilor Franzen. I, I think it's just uh, at this point, it's the, the motion to to move, move in principle yep. and any sort of refinement to signs and whatnot would be, I guess, addressed at time of consideration. Be correct. Okay. Another question? Uh, yes. Okay. Regarding the buckhorn sign, there was some discussion about it. Has it been purchased or I know we approved it last year, a new sign for buckhorn. And then there's discussion about whether Trent Lake's logo is going to be incorporated in it. I don't know whether there's don't any know how far that's gone on. Does anyone have any information on no. Thank you and through you. I believe that is potentially some of the money we had for new signage. We did not proceed with that. I think there were some early quotes obtained for that, and that was a lot more money than we yeah. had in the budget. It was close so, to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and then, and then I think because we were looking at potentially changing okay. the logo or the strategy for that. So, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none. We have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. We've had conversation. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank yeah. you very much. Could I table and just test people's appetite? Uh, a motion to uh, add an additional $20,000 uh, to the budget, down from my $100,000, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to augment the new relaunch strategy. Okay, we have. Okay, I, would, I would support that. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Or any conversation? You think it's not a lot of money to develop something because it's going to be here for a long, long time? Okay. okay, see no hands up in the gallery. Okay, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you. No. We are going to move on to 5.3.2 of our agenda. 
which is Justin Clark, our Director of Corporate Services and Kurt. Please speak to this item. Thank you. Through you, Mayor Lamstad, this is a request to include additional funds for accessibility initiatives, uh, specifically for 2024 for document remediation. We did do uh, an RFP in 2023 for an accessibility initiative, which includes the development of training and template resources, which is anticipated to be completed um, by the end of March uh, 2024. And a provisional service of this RFP was document remediation for a period of two years with the option to extend for one additional year. So staff are looking for the 10,000 in 2024 um, and we'll revisit this amount annually for the term of the contract. Um, along with this is the creation of the new GL, which was mentioned earlier um, in the administration budget to fund accessibility projects. So currently staff budget 15,000 in the council IT hardware software GL for closed captioning. So we would transfer this amount over to this new GL and the creation of this GL would prompt staff to prioritize accessibility and look for projects annually to improve accessibility. Um, and this is in alignment with council strategic plan and the multi-year accessibility plan. Thank you very much, Jesse Clark. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Through you, Mayor, just a quick question. Document remediation. Thank you. Through through you, um, the um, Accessibility for Ontarians with Disability Act, or AODA, um, has certain communi um, communication standards that we have to conform to, and that means that um, specifically for web content, all of our documents need to be accessible. So, um, like, basic would be to be able to be read with a screen reader, making sure headings are in order, um, appropriate font sizes, uh, color contrast, as well as uh, if there's images, descriptions of what that is. Um, so um, when we tr get plans done now, we try to incorporate that accessibility has to be part of the final project, uh, but some of our older documents don't, but they are on our website. So remediating those documents to the current accessibility standard that we're required to meet. Perfect, thank you. Any other questions? Let's see. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Do you have a question? Go ahead. I'll make a motion. Four thousand. Okay. Okay. Do I have a seconder for that motion? <clears throat> see Councilor Graver for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Mayor, could we have a five minute final break before you move into the next yep. section? Okay. Let's do a follow up. Five minutes. Let's make it 10 okay. minutes because the last time five minutes. Minute. We, we had a conversation going on in our gallery there. there. Okay, we are back. We uh, are moving on to item 5.4 of our agenda, which is other protective protection services. And Barbara Waldron, our director of building and planning and CBO, would you like to speak to the item 5.4.1? Thank you, Mayor Manted. I do have Adele with me. She's going to um, answer any planning questions. She's she's the front person connected to CIP and development charges. We've already talked about CIP, but if there's any other questions um, pertaining to planning, we can both handle them. So the building and planning budget is fairly typical from year to year for costs, but there's a few things I just wanted to highlight. Um, the building permit fee revenue is based on its cost recovery. That's the way it's supposed to be set up. So that's where that number comes from. But I did want to add a few comments. Um, so permits issued have been reduced this year, which has been the common theme among building departments across the county and the province, with the exception of the bigger cities where the build more homes faster is being directed to the larger cities on sewer and water. The combination of permits increasing over the last two years due to COVID 
bringing more people out to the real rural areas and now seeing those types of permit applications being reduced in numbers as well as the interest rates have had an impact on the permit numbers this year. We are a unique department in that we are supposed to set our fees uh, to cover ourselves so that it, our department does not touch the tax base typically other than those that are developing because developing develop, developed should pay for develop in my theory. Having said that, the number of permits is always the wild card because you can't try, you can try to work the averages and hope they stay consistent. But when there is a year where the average is not met, it has an impact on the reserve. The reserve is meant to be used for these types of situations, but often the balance of the reserve can cover one to two years. So setting fees appropriately to ensure that costs are covered based on averages is important, but it is also a balancing act as there is a point where permit fees hit the threshold of being excessive for the applicants, but the low permit fear, fear or the low permit fee years certainly affect the revenue budget in a cost recovery system. There is two new uh, sources of revenue that have been added into the bylaw, sorry, into the budget, uh, $7,500 for radio communication towers because we're bringing that in-house. And the amount of money that's uh, in for septic permits has been prorated to the April 1st date based on the average number of permits the health unit has let us know that we typically have. The revenue from shoreline road allowance and shoreline land sales is, taking, is being taken out of this budget and put, in, put back into uh, the amid budget because the clerk does all the work. <laughs> Um, I know council, councillors typically don't like to see the word other in a budget, so I wanted to explain the other. Uh, typically, in our case, it covers unexpected expenses, obviously, but typically it will cover overages um, such as training, education, and seminars because they often pop up through the year and it can't be planned for, and they're usually good for staff. Uh, one item that's going to affect us 2024 is the new code drop that should be coming in March. And the only difference between this one and, and a typical code drop is that this is now the national building code. So it's a different format. Typically when we get a code drop, you just kind of compare page to page and, and see what the differences are. But this is like a whole new code that's organized in a different fashion. It will have an Ontario component to it. <clears throat> so in bylaw, we have taken a portion of the expenses for wages um, out of building and put into bylaw so that the amount of money that's being generated or being costed is going into where it's being used and then that reduces the permit fee requirement revenue. Uh, we do have a planning fee report coming shortly, second meeting in December. Uh, the planning fees are going to be adjusted uh, and there will be some new fees in being asked to be implemented so that it can be more consistent to the building bylaws so that um, development is paying for development. There's $40,000 for, it's under zoning and maintenance and official plan. Um, so money has been budgeted to begin the process, process of hiring a consultant to work with staff on preparing the new zoning bylaw. It appears that the county official plan could be one to two years away from being adopted due to the provincial policy statement update being deferred at the provincial level of government. Instead of waiting for the OP to be approved, it is prudent for us to take this time and begin the process of creating a new zoning bylaw so that it could be shelf ready when the OP is approved. Staff would like to get additional residential unit policies in place, as this is a topic that the building department gets many calls on. We are at a point where waiting for the OP to be passed by the province is hindering staff to process these types of requests, because at this time, an applicant would be required to do a zoning amendment and an official plan amendment. We do need to consider amending our own OP in the meantime, if it becomes apparent that the county OP is going to be deferred for quite a long time. The county, um, recently the county planning department has 
uh, sent out emails uh, to reestablish the TAC committee. Uh, so Adele's going to be the point person and I will attend the meetings where possible. I always like to have my final comment just as a reminder that uh, building permit and planning applications take precedence over all work because they are time sensitive related. So we'd be, and the few highlights off of my work plan, uh, the zoning bylaw, the additional dwelling units, these are kind of the top priority items that I think we should be looking at. Um, bylaws, I, I would like to, in the first four months, I would like to do our building bylaw, our property standards bylaw, a swimming pool bylaw to be ready for the spring, and a new sign bylaw. The development charges study um, is in progress, and the CIP as well, as noted before. One of the things that I do want to get done in the first quarter, and I think it's very important to showing efficiencies or improving efficiencies in the building department is to have a very comprehensive building permit application package. I had a very thorough one in OSM that I'm going to use as a template. And it really cut down on phone calls, questions, because everything was in there. We have information kind of spread here, there, and everywhere. So I think combining it all is really going to help our department. And as well, um, we're going to work on the building bylaw and have that done. And we are going to present council with an updated permit fee review. Septic systems um, is going to be talked about here shortly. And the short-term rental group, we have a report coming on that as well shortly. And I guess that's it. If you have any questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Barbara. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Through, through you, Mayor. Um, it's just a comment. Just uh, regarding your uh, work task uh, classification uh, chart that you have there, um, I just wanted to comment as far as the, the cannabis policy. Uh, and under, under that uh, heading, you have three items uh, number two and three caught my attention. Identify locations for retail business and growing operations. Update the zoning bylaw and official plan. Provide for permitted uses and regulations. Um, I'll preface everything I'm going to say right now with <clears throat> I have nothing against marijuana and whatnot. It's legal and that sort of thing. Have at it, that, that, that type of thing. I just don't think, uh, no not knowing what the policy is, is going to look like. I just don't think encouraging it and actually looking at it and how to implement that into our uh, community, uh, especially in the Hamlet, like if you're looking at popcorn, uh, if, if they're going to open a store, there's hardly any st uh, stores or businesses there to begin with. We have a tattoo shop, which is, they're fantastic. I think we would like to attract uh, businesses that are, uh, I guess, more, you know, not uh, specific so far insofar as, you know, have a more general, a general interest. I, I just don't think it would be good for the community. Like just in, in my past and my past line of work, I just, uh, it just attracts the wrong type of person. It doesn't stop anybody else from getting it from wherever else and they're going to use it and consume it and that's fine but i just don't know whether that is a good um, policy to be actually concentrating on it and making it available to the municipality and that, that type of thing so i just i just don't think that uh, it would be uh, have a positive overall impact on the municipality because we rely on block 31 we rely on our tourism and whatnot and uh, and I just know from living going to different places and all that and you get that waft and, and people are just put off by it so I just don't want to be encouraging that okay uh, through you Mayor Lamb said this is a, a action item that's been on the work plan before I got here I've just basically have moved it forward I think Adele has a little bit of history on it yes thank you and through you Mr. Mayor um, it's been on the work plan for a while, and other municipalities have policies in place that can't locate um, a cannabis store 
within so many meters of uh, a school. So there are certain rules and regulations. And also when they're developed for growing uh, operations, there are certain parameters that you would adhere to in terms of you've got to control the odor and the, both the fans and the noise. So there's a lot of things that go with development of such an operation. So it'd be kind of nice that the municipality did have some policies in place. But of course, with anything like this, a uh, report would come to council and provide some direction. And we would certainly look at other municipalities in order to get the best policies in place that we can. Any other questions? I mean, that is a medium priority for 2025 as well. So. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, one comment, two questions. Uh, the comment is the tree protection uh, preservation policy and the shoreline preservation bylaw. Uh, I, I believe both of those are going to be referred to the environmental advisory committee, which makes sense. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is that they are high priority because one's been on the book since 2019 <laughs> and the other one is also of some higher importance. So it's low importance for you, obviously, but when it goes to the committee, I'd suggest it is a high priority. Uh, the two questions are, uh, last year, there was a uh, proposal which we deferred to go into the trailer parks and inspect them and enter into site agreements. And I just wondered if that is still an issue and or a priority and or something that was on your radar. Through you, Mayor said uh, that that still is a very important thing. Uh, 2023 just was a very busy year, and some things had to be moved to this year. That was one of them. Um, it is high on my radar. Uh, one of the fees that I'll be proposing, or not proposing, but um, increasing, is the trailer park fee because there is a lot of work involved in going in there. Um, the site plan part of it. Usually site plan is triggered by a mechanism, so a planning application or some sort of, the site plan bylaw usually has the, the triggers to implement a site plan agreement and a site plan um, to go along with it. So we're just considering that through the renewal of the license, um, we're gonna be asking for an updated site plan so that we have correct documentation at our end um, and we will have to go in and verify that what we're being presented is what's on the ground. I think what we're gonna find is that there's a whole lot more sites in these places than that they're being reported, um, which will evolve into some additional work, but it's important for our department to know what's out there so that we can address our policies to meet what's out there. So it is an important thing to us. Thank you, and their license renews every year? Every or? year. Every year. Thank you. Um, the second question was around the CIP. I see we have $50,000 budgeted for this year. Um, I think that's exclusive to the consultant that was in last year's budget. Um, and I mean, it would be great if it's true, but I think in the past, honestly, we've spent $2,500 here, $5,000 there. In total, I doubt if we had uh, made grants that total more than fifteen dollars or $20,000. So do we really think we're going to have that aggressive a program around CIP this coming year? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, as we're looking at the existing grant programs that are available through our current CIP, our consultant is looking at the introduction of new grant programs, which will be presented to council in the new year. So with the addition of the new new grant programs, we feel that there will be an influx of people wanting to come and improve their properties as well. Okay. Yeah, that's enough for now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Cadigan. Uh, through you, Mayor, this question is for our chief billing official. Timing for official plan for Trent Lakes. <laughs> Uh, this spring, or are we looking summertime if we don't have one from the province? Oh, our, sorry, yeah, through our you, own. Mayor Nelson, our own. Yes. Um, I'm just putting that out there as we may go down that road. 
once we get into the TAC meetings again, we'll probably have a better idea of really what's happening up at the higher levels. Um, you know, is it gonna be two years? Is it gonna be three? Is it gonna be one? If it's gonna be one, I think that we can work with that because it's gonna take us a bit to get the rezoning, the zoning bylaw done anyway. So I think the timing for that would be okay. But if it's beyond a year, I think we will have to consider just making some minor amendments to our own just to so that we can serve our residents for the things okay. that they're asking for. Thank you. I do believe that's another question I'll ask MPP Smith. Mm -hmm. When are we going to get that? <laughs> yeah. Again, mm -hmm. I will ask that question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Nothing. Okay. Okay, we can move on to Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Lampson. Um, right, okay. Um, so, in context, the first two strategic priorities for our plan are one, to have the best policies in place to streamline municipal processes, and two, to have infrastructure in place in order to best support future growth of the municipality. Um, and in the economic development plan, goal three is to develop a business friendly, friendly municipality. Um, so I had proposed this last year and we deferred it because uh, we were still trying to work through a backlog of applications uh, that were, we had because of the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, and the proposal was to bring in a consultant to do what's known as a Six Sigma review of our building uh, department and planning departments, which really is a process that looks at the overall steps in a process, how long each one takes, whether there is any redundancy of information, uh, how much each one costs, and tries to, at the end of it, uh, identify opportunities to reduce cycle time, to reduce costs, and to increase customer satisfaction. So it's a pretty rigorous uh, review of a process. Um, and I think it's important to establish at a minimum some baseline information about how long is it taking to go through each stage of the building process or the planning process. And once we have that, we have a, a way that we can show improvement on that, which I know Barb is, is working towards a lot of things that should improve, improve that. So I put it forward again. I've had a conversation with Barb. Um, the challenge, of course, is that when you bring in a consultant to understand a process, it's an enormous amount of staff time. Because they need to understand all the steps, who does what, what are the forms, what are the documents, what's the interaction with the customer, blah, blah, blah. So I recognize that, and this is a year in which we are going to add to that department septic inspections um, and possibly something around short-term rentals. So I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings. <laughs> so on the one hand, I am reluctant to introduce something that will further draw on the resources of that department. On the other hand, I do think it's important that we take a, a an objective, systematic look at those processes. And again, this is nothing critical of the individuals or their capabilities or you know, their work or whatever. It's really a clinical review of the entire process. So uh, I put it in here. Um, I think the preference for the director would be to defer it. Um, let's have the conversation. Uh, I would be more inclined to at least put it in the budget so we have the opportunity to do this sometime during the year uh, if we if we think it's appropriate. Because um, I hate to go now two years without having done this. But I do understand the demands it puts on our staff. So hopefully, I and I, with the consultant, I don't know, probably $40,000 a year. This clearly takes some outside expertise that we do not have in-house. Um, so I put about forty thousand to fifty thousand uh, dollars based on previous and recent consultant engagements. Um, so put that out there and welcome the discussion. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead, Councilor Franz. Yeah, uh, I I think it should be deferred. Uh, 
uh, there's a lot on the department's plate right now. They're trying to work through some of the inefficiencies and uh, streamline their operations and uh, uh, they're bringing on the septic approval. So I, I think there's well, it's a very intricate department. And uh, I, I, I think part of the issue is that some of the contractors have to go through a learning curve and understand how the building permit system works. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Yeah, that's through you, Mayor. A uh, question to Deputy, uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, now, as far as the, the Six Sigma expert are, are the experts would they be subject matter experts do they there's a whole accreditation process in six sigma and there are make sure your comments go through levels. the chair please oh i'm sorry i'm sorry really upset um through you Thank you. um there are several levels of certification yellow belt white belt black belt whatever so yes okay and through you mayor uh to deputy mayor armstrong um, specifically, uh, these the, the Six Sigma the, the consultants would they have subject matter expert as far as uh, the building department and, and that sort of thing? And through you, Mayor Lamb said, uh, I think that would be one of the things we would stipulate for the RFP. Just just a couple of comments, uh, and Deputy Mayor Armstrong uh, alluded to it. Uh, I just I. I, could, I, I tend to agree to defer it, uh, and, and I'll provide a caveat with deferring it for another year. I just, I just don't see the benefit of spending forty to fifty thousand dollars to have a consultant come in and um, sort of uh, sit and assess um, the processes of our building department um, when we have a, a, a capable uh, building official uh, and to uh, Councillor Franzen's point uh, next or next year is going to be a big year uh, taking over the septic program as well as the uh, short-term rental demands that are going to be put on the uh, building department as well as the the um, the AMP program and how that's going to roll out that's another responsibility that's going to be on the uh, building department as far as uh, hearing officers and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of uh, unknowns as far as how uh, things are going to roll out. So at very least, I, I, I tend to def uh, suggest to defer it for a year. And then I, I still challenge uh, spending that amount of money on uh, a report. Uh, I haven't seen any other sort of, I haven't seen any uh, reports from these types of uh, this type of uh, analysis so i don't know how how um how they go about what their process is in, in reporting it i i have i i think through um through working through issues and whatnot i think uh barb and her staff uh as well as planning they work through their issues and they they identify themselves and i know that they've uh they've come to council many times identifying issues and and, and how to resolve them and that sort of thing. So I just don't know what the benefit is, not having much experience with the Six Sigma uh, and, and the benefit and, and it's the cost too, it's 40 to 50,000. I just don't wanna put more pressure. I just want people breathing down, you know, our building departments uh, over their shoulders, so to speak. But again, it's it's for me not knowing how the process works, I may be, you know, misspeaking, but uh, so I, I tend not to support that. Thank you very much. Councillor Cadigan would like a comment. Uh, through you, Mayor, I'm hoping that the deputy might be able to explain to me how this process would work. Would they be able to provide suggestions for implementing new programs like the AMP system or the septic system, Six Sigma, like their process? That's what they do, right? They they come up with the most efficient process. So, is that something to do? Yeah, you, Mayor Lamb said, um, no, they would not come up with new programs per se, okay. but they would look at, let's say, um, and I, I doubt they'll find much now because of cloud permit, but they will look at all of the uh, application requirements and documents that need to be submitted throughout the process. 
and say, well, you're asking for the same information three or four times in each of these different submissions. So cut that out. You're asking for, uh, there are too many iterations on uh, the design, for example. How do you make it once, you know, so that you only have to look at it once? A little impractical, but at least cut down on it. So, uh, and if it's taking, you know, a month to get the approval, why is that? And in most cases, we know it's because the application was not complete in the first place. But then they would look to say, well, why is that? Why is the application not complete in the first place? Is it because they're stupid? Some are, or stupid or unfamiliar with it. Or is it because they don't have sufficient direction or a sufficient checklist? Um, and so they would try and look at each one of those steps and say, how do we make this better so the time is shorter, we spend less staff time on these, and the client gets their approval faster. So I, I hope that sort of explains it. clarifies it, it so much. Yeah, I wish I had a good example to give you. But I do know where, you know, in a corporate world, when that comes in, um, there are some pretty significant cost savings, um, sometimes staff savings, which won't be the case here. Um, uh, also very customer focused. Like how do we ensure that they're not having to do the same thing many, many times over, where it might be redundant or, you know, too many communications. So it just cuts down on all of that. And it's very clear recommendations. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not vague. If I may make a comment, uh, we deferred this last year. I'm in support of seeing it again in the 2024 budget. I'd like to see more efficiencies if possible. Okay. Any other comments? I just have one little comment before we go to staff is that through discussions with our planning and building department, they're creating their own efficiencies in some areas. So it's 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 a process that is getting better, I think. So it's it's just this might help get better faster. It's it's more of an analogy of the process, not the people. So we're not we're not here to hurt anybody. Go ahead. Uh, I think it was Adele first. Go ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, it's unfortunate that Council hasn't seen the report I've been working on in terms of planning application fees and increasing them. It's been 10 plus years that the municipality has not increased any fees. And the report that I'm preparing is very, very detailed. So I looked, for example, at his only bylaw amendment. Who works on what is the process? So I have a chart for each application. So we take the application in, we review it, how much time staff spend on the report, <coughs> and these are all averages. Our external planning consultants, so what I'm trying to do is to justify our fees in that report, but it does give a detail on all the time spent to process an application. So that's kind of very similar in terms of process, and maybe once that's in place, and with cloud permit now coming over to planning, we are looking at some efficiencies that if there's a document submitted, um, such as planning does a site plan agreement for shoreline restoration to make sure that when it comes to the building permit process, Barb has that handy. It's not floating somewhere. She could just pull it off the system. So I think there are some efficiencies that you know will be forthcoming and the benefit of the planning report fees that I'm doing, you'll see each application we deal with and how much time is spent and the cost of it. And as Barb said, development paying for development, but from the planning end is a little different than the building end where planning, we as planners look at applications, not only at the developer's perspective or an applicant, but we're also looking at the benefit to the entire municipality and is there any impacts to the development on a municipal basis so it's a little different in that regard and i hope that this report that's coming forward will really be an eye-opener to see how much time is spent on the applications i'm looking at introducing new planning fees as well because there's a lot of work that we do that we don't collect a fee for and so putting these things in, in process will be more efficient for the department as well. Okay, thank you very much. And I think Barb, you had a 
Conversation. Through you, Mayor Lambshead, uh, one of the things I, I do have concern about uh, bringing a, an individual in is it absolutely has to be the correct individual. Because when you think about, um, like if an individual went to a city, everybody's slotted into a box. Like everybody has a job and that's what they do where we wear many hats. A role is totally different scenario. We wear many different hats. So it would have to be somebody that understands that because that is a really important factor in our world. Um, and I did mention the application, I think, or sorry, the um, information package. I think that that's going to be a definite help. But the, I'm really excited about bringing the subjects in house. I see major efficiencies with bringing them in house. Um, planning uh, is often waiting for comments back on applications. Sometimes they don't get them. Uh, so having that in-house is just walk across the hall and provide the information or have a discussion about the information um, is going to streamline that absolutely. And it is always one of the last items I'm always looking for or I'm looking for to be amended because I picked up that the septic was sized for three bedrooms and the house has six bedrooms. So um, being able to pick that up at the front end is going to make the building permit process efficient as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Ahead, hey, just a comment through you, Mayor Lynch, that um, Adele, thank you very much for that. That is very much what I'm kind of looking for, because we have no way of measuring improvement in a process unless we know today how long it's taking, what it's costing, and, um, you know, how many iterations there are. So that information is critical for us to then look at where can we improve or where are we improving, and then measure the result of that. So I'm encouraged to hear that. I think that's exactly what we need. And I'm hoping we can do a little more in expanding that kind of information on the, the building side um, in terms of timelines and iterations, et cetera. And that would give us a basis of then um, knowing really how long different things take. Uh, on average, I understand they're all variable, but on average, and then also give us a baseline against which we can measure improvement from the things that you're doing. Would like to speak to that point. Through you, Mayor Lamb said, I know how important this is to you. And um, one of the things I'm going to be doing as we are processing applications, and I'm going to be keeping track of time so that I can actually give you data maybe in three months or six months. Um, the wild card is what comes in at the front end, more so what does not come in at the front end, and what we're always asking for or incomplete applications. Um, just getting the starting group of documents in place is key for us to do a real quick review. What's happening is 90% of the time it's not complete, it's not thorough enough, and it ends up backing us up at this end because we're going back and forth with the individual. So through updating the application, or sorry, I keep saying application, the um, that's me. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so through updating the building permit application uh, to what I see in my mind and what I have done in the past, I see that solving a lot of issues to the point where they have to read it. I mean, you can only take a horse so far and they you can't make them drink. I mean, if it's there for them to read, then it's on them to make sure they, we have provided you the information, you need to read it. So there's education on both sides. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead, Councilor Franzen. Just one question for you to uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, is this uh, also going to uh, include bylaws? Or I, what did I try to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm get, uh, getting uh, all So through you, Marilyn, yeah, bylaws. Yes, that's what. Uh, I wasn't thinking 
uh, of including that in, in the scope of it? I was thinking, no, I wasn't. Yeah, thinking. okay, okay, just. Mm -hmm. Councilor Brieber. Three, you're married to uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. So on, on the heels of uh, Councilor Granzi's comments, so <coughs> if you were to, uh, if we were to decide to employ the services of Six Sigma, is it is it us that dictate the scope uh, of which they review? Uh, I.e., like if they're reviewing the processes in the building department, uh, would that not include, to Councillor Franzen's point, um, all our bylaws and how they how they uh, apply to the AMP system and that sort of thing? Would they not look at all the processes and, and that sort of thing? Would it would it, would it suck those into the, the analysis, so to speak? Uh, through Mayor Lambshead, um, first of all, yes, we could be very specific as to what processes we want. Um, and I, I I haven't recently, but I continue to hear um, that our processes are slow, that we're asking for things that we don't need to, um, et cetera. I don't believe that's necessarily true, but I certainly, I, and I know Barb has heard some of them, um, but we either have to confirm that that's the case and fix it, or we need to say it's not a problem, or, or it is a problem and Barb is already working on it. So thank you, but don't complain anymore or we have to say it's not a problem and we're not going to talk about it anymore. So you're married just to follow up uh, to that. Uh, and that in reviewing this, so that was the sort of questions that I had. If if you did go that route, uh, trying to, the six, six Sigma, trying to address, let's just call them complaints. Uh, in order to address that complaint, I mean, they would have to in order to do a thorough investigation, they would have to, let's say there's 10 complaints. They would have to get the interview of the complainants to get their perspective on it and not just a process. If you're, if you're, uh, if there's 10 complaints about, let's just say they're all about one, one item. Uh, the, I guess the analysis would, or the investigation would be just one sided looking at, well, here's the complaint, but, what is the complainant's perspective on it? And what is their take on it? Why do they think that something, you know, what was the impetus for their uh, complaint and that sort of thing? So I just, I don't know how how this this uh, uh, company would would deal with that without having to, or you know, if somebody's complaining, there's ten people complaining. Me as an investigator, okay, I want I want both sides of it. You know, in order for me to go, oh, okay, it is a process issue, or it's a complaining issue, uh, as opposed to just having, here's ten complaints, okay, and not having the opportunity to, to sort of, you know, is it vexatious, is it frivolous, or is it actually a process? So I don't know if that would be able to be achieved if that, if interviewing complainants is not part of their uh, protocol. Yeah, um, dear Mayor Lamson, this is getting very extended here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I apologize yeah. for that. Maybe it's because I'm not explaining it very carefully. This is not a complaint review process. This is Uh, somebody coming in and look at your internal processes to see, you know, what's the same document. So it really, we, everything that we are opportunities to reduce time or reduce redundancy. And, you know, that's it. You know, the complaints have been addressed through that. So this is not going, this is not complaint driven. This is process review driven. 
Thank you, Mayor Lamsa. Just my final comment. Um, I'm not adverse to somebody pointing out how to do things better. Um, I, I like getting feedback and I've always thought of, not as criticism, but when somebody comes to you and points something out, that's a learning opportunity. I've always welcomed that. So I'm not adverse to it. I just feel 2024 is not the year. And 2024 at the same time is the year because we're introducing septics where we can come up with some, I'm, I, I know what you want and I know what you need. I feel I can come up with some metrics that will maybe give you some more comfort of how we're doing things along with making some changes to our documents. And so I, I am going to be keeping track now that I know you would like this. Um, we didn't do it last year, so I, would, I had no way of actually answering your question when you asked me. But going forward, I feel that we can um, get some data. Okay. Anyone have any more conversation? Mayor Lamb said, any comments from you? I, I, well, I, I just, through many conversations that Barb and I have had over the past year or so, that there's always two sides to every conversation. And many times, I always, many, many times, I've always found that the information we're getting from the person complaining is not really the true information. And when we see the true information, I do understand why the process is taking longer. There's there's things that are not put in a, a permit, and that delays the whole game. If you have everything in your permit, there's a 10-day must-be-signed-and-out policy. So it's it's it's. I think we need more education of our ratepayers and contractors to make sure their applications are complete. I don't know that it's just a policy issue. I, I, I think it's more education issue. That's my comment. I, I, I'm in favor of doing this if it helps our building and planning department. That's, that's my whole idea is that to help, not hinder. Go ahead. Fidel, you have that's right, Mr. Mayor. I share the same um, sentiments as uh, Barb in terms of her comments. Um, in terms of planning, there are certain guidelines the changes made to the planning app. So in terms of processing applications, we have say 90 days. And if we don't process the application within that timeline, the applicant has an opportunity to ask for a portion of their processing fee back. So we haven't put in any of our reports because we've been meeting those timelines because now you know that with the changes, in order for us to accept a complete application, we need certain documentation before we determine it complete. So we've been meeting our timelines in accordance with the Planning Act. Nobody's come to the municipality and said, I want my money back because you didn't process it within 90 days. So I'm thinking that maybe we'll put in our planning reports, maybe just a one-liner, in terms of the timelines that we've processed it within the 90 days, but we haven't had any problems in terms of meeting the timelines for our planning applications. From my perspective on that though, are we asking for far too much at the beginning? And then that completely delays the whole process until we're putting the onus back on the applicant to, to get every study known to man before they have a complete application. So that, that's I, that's been brought up to me a couple of times. I've, I've asked for 40 different or 14 different studies and things that only five or six of them, the planner thought were relevant, but we've asked for them all, which really delayed the whole process because there's, you know, you have a, I mean, you're gonna do an environmental impact study. You're gonna do those things in a species at risk study. Those things are necessary, but not everything is necessary every time. And that was the comment that I've had from a couple of planners that are, working in our community. I don't know if that's a, something we can look at, whether you need all these studies on every application, because that certainly delays the, the start time of the timeline until the application is incomplete by months, if not years. And it seems like some of the municipalities around us don't ask for all that stuff, but I don't know if that's true. Mr. Braver has a comment. Yeah, through you, uh, through you, Mayor, uh, just to build on your comment, Mayor, uh, is there an ability, Adele, 
uh, to build that efficiency into email to do it uh, as far as looking you know if there's 10 items they don't have to necessarily do all the 10 items and point that out to the uh, the applicant as opposed to just handing the applicant a here's your here's the requirements and that sort of thing through you, Mr. Mayor, and doing any kind of planning application would require free consultation. It's not required for minor variances, but for a zoning bylaw amendment, we will have our pre consultation and we have a checklist and we identify based on the information provided by the applicant what studies are required. And I'm not aware that we are asking for anything that is not in our mind required in order to assess and analyze the application before us. There may be a report that came forward that may not have a bearing such as an archeological assessment. There's nothing there, but we've asked for that report. But the report itself may not identify anything. But part of our process in the pre-consultation is we ask for a report that we think we require to analyze the application. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to propose a motion to to defer this uh, to the 2025 uh, budget. Um, now, Donna, you can assist me here with the caveat to, to keep the uh, 40,000 sort of on hold un until future consideration of the 2025 budget. Is that, I think you know, the deputy mayor had mentioned that. Um, so thank you and through you. So no, that would be a budget considered in that budget year. So we wouldn't move it forward to another year. Yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't commit to that yet because we don't know what would happen in those years for other spending required. So we wouldn't commit to it. So are you still prepared to make a motion? Yes, make a motion to defer uh, this consideration to the 2025 budget. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? Okay. Councillor Franzen for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay. Thank you very much. We can move on now to our CAO treasurer for our short term rental working group. No one. Um, so at the March 21st regular meeting, Council directed the reestablishment of the short term rental working group to review the components of a short term rental licensing bylaw and provide a draft bylaw for Council consideration. So the working group met in April and expedited development and implementation of the administrative monetary penalty framework, as well as uh, contracting maxima or seeking approval to contract maxima to provide after hour and weekend enforcement services. So the working group has met three times, once in September, October, and November, with the mandate to review components of a short-term rental licensing bylaw and also provide a draft bylaw for council consideration and what the budget would be for that type of, of recommendations, which would be any additional staffing or resources for any new program. So just an update, the working group um, have looked at the current federal and provincial political landscapes, uh, short-term rental regulation as well. Uh, we have had Aaron and Bearless provide a presentation and some subsequent advice to the working group on options for managing short-term rentals, which included specifics on inspections of properties for licensing approval. The group has undertaken a thorough review and documentation of 52 short-term rental licensing bylaws in Ontario, and has agreed on some specifics of a draft bylaw. There have been preliminary discussions on public consultation, and the group is working through exact provisions that could be included in a licensing bylaw to reach a consensus on a draft to be brought to council. So the short-term rental working group is meeting again on December 1st to discuss managing exemptions to the bylaw, timelines for completion of a draft bylaw, public consultation, and the development of supporting documents relating to the application intake, site inspection checklists, 
and the use of Granicus for administrative support. So that's just an update for you. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions of Donna? Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Friend. Yeah, just one very quick question. If, if we do support, and I do support life uh if we do support this, does that mean that we're on the road to licensing? Oh, thank you, interview. So, are you talking the budget paper that is the budget in? paper? Oh, okay. We the budget paper. Are 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 we saying that we are going to have a licensing program? So, it, through you, it allows the budget funds to be available should council direct that. It, it basically so we would be consideration certainly for this program would be that there would be some revenue brought in from the licensing fee. We haven't included that in the draft budget to date because that's really hard to predict at this time, depending if we actually do carry through this year or if it's a 2025 initiative. But yes, it just allows it to be in the budget should it be required. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead, Councilor Braver. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, I support I, I support this, uh, and uh, I, I think it's a necessary uh, process expense, and, and it's stipulated it's uh, basically the first year. It's a support even without uh, even if it wasn't going to lead to licensing. I, I think it's if you go through each of the items, it, it is it is still a, a, a beneficial expense to at least illuminate uh, through Granicus. Uh, the results from Granicus of what we are dealing with uh, gives us a more um, fulsome uh, perspective on on what we are dealing with, uh, and it's it takes a lot of the guessing out of it. You know, do we have a hundred uh, short-term rentals? Do we have three hundred? Well, this uh, Granicus uh, company they they handle all that and they uh, they uh, they, they collate all the information that comes in. They provide us with a, a clear view of what we're dealing with. And that could support uh, either uh, an argument for licensing or or, or an, uh, a rendition thereof, and that sort of thing. So, Councillor mm -hmm. Cadigan, do you have a question? I don't at this point. Thank you, Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamson. Um, just to provide a little bit of more credibility for this group, they are currently working with uh, at least two dozen. Uh, municipalities in Ontario, including the city of Kortha Lakes, um, trying to think of some smaller ones, Brighton, Tiny, uh, Lake of Bays, Huntsville, et cetera, et cetera. And we did interview somebody, at least one municipality who had used them uh, during our initial uh, work, and they were very pleased with themselves. And I think as, uh, as Councilor Braybrook says, they will give us a complete profile of the short-term rental uh, locations in our municipality, size, uh, number of bedrooms, rental costs, uh, how much during the year they rent. So they'll give us an entire database of our uh, uh, short-term rentals. So uh, they are a hugely valuable, I think, resource for us at minimal cost. Uh, plus, we looked at some different options in terms of how we would support uh, both the inspections for license applications as well as processing the applications and really felt that we needed to uh, get additional staff support for that and not lo load that on top of our building and planning group. Uh, so that's why you'll see the six-month contract position uh, in here uh, plus whatever benefits, not benefits, but uh, tools they need as well as the benefits. So the budget request is $84,000. Uh, as Donna said, uh, we can recoup most of that if we do go aggressively in implementing this. We know already there are, you know, I think uh, Granicus has already done a scoping for us even before we paid them anything, that there's close to 400 identifiable short-term rental properties in Trent Lakes, and they've mapped them all out, et cetera. So 84,000, you know, if we got 100 applications, you're there, but it, but obviously to, to Donna's point, we do have to put it in the budget because we have no certainty that we'll recoup that. But we had always uh, proposed that this would be a cost recovery uh, self-funding program, 
and that's still the intent. It just may be that year one, it doesn't self-fund itself, but once we actually get uh, going, uh, that's that's continues to be the intent. Thank you, Secretary Mayor. No problem. Any other comments or questions? I see Councilor Braver. Thank you, Mayor. Now it's more of a process. Just looking at the uh, the uh, next document, uh, the recommendation from staff. Um, perhaps uh, our clerk uh, Jesse would be able to assist. Would it would it make sense to uh, receive the report and then approve or uh, approve the uh, request paper? Uh, yeah, you can receive through you, Marilyn, but you can receive the report. It was just provided as a supplemental document to just provide an update on the status of the working group uh, to go with the budget request. But yep, you can do a receive and then um, deal with the budget request in the same motion. Okay, so uh, I'd like to, with that, Mayor, I'd like to uh, propose a motion to receive the report for the short term rental working group status update uh, and, the and approve the accompanying. <clears throat> Uh, budget request paper uh, regarding the short-term rental working group uh, funding for the first year. Okay, do I have a seconder for that motion? I see Deputy Mayor Armstrong for a seconder. Any other conversation? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Okay, I think we're going to take a little recess for lunch. How long do we think we need? Half an hour? Half an hour seems reasonable. Yeah. We'll start with 30 minutes. Can we can I have a motion? I need a motion oh. for that though. Yeah. Deputy oh, Armstrong for Hoover, Councilor Cadigan for a seconder. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. I think we're hungry. Okay. Okay, we are back after our lunch recess. We can move on to item 5.4.4 of our agenda, which is Brother Walter, our Director of Public or Building the Plan and CBO. Hey, would you like to speak to this item, Mark? Through you, Mayor Lanshead. I'll keep this short because I know time is of the essence here. <clears throat> um, so this report is brought back to before council as requested at the November 7th, 2023 council meeting, um, where it was requested that some more information come to council as to the breakdown of each of the types of permits and the amount of time that's allotted to them. So I have broke them down into all the different possible reasons that we would be <coughs> reviewing applications for sewage. Uh, the information, as far as the time goes, this information was taken from some PPH information that was provided to all the municipalities as an assistance. Um, I Pretty much it's all the same. I modified a little bit here and there just because of, of our geography or our situation up here. So I'm not going to reread everything. I'm just going to add a few comments. Um, so through implementing and taking over the safe sewage program, we will have our hand on the pulse of the required septic system per property at the front end instead of the back end to catch issues, which will equate to shortening timelines of issuing the final house or structure permit. I'm very pleased to have two very energetic and experienced staff to complete the inspections. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Having the safe sewage program in-house will improve both building and planning timelines for applications as there will be no waiting for information or sending applicant back to PPH for amended applications. Being the last municipality that will receive the historical data, 
we will be given this in a format where the information can be easily accessed for properties as I have asked for addresses to be included in the final data document. Names are not always helpful because properties change hands, lot and concession, uh, installer name, date of install, all information that's not helpful to us. The address is the key, so I've uh, been firm on that request. To implement the SSP, to obtain some hard data on how or if the additional work affects the department, to make a formal decision based on concrete data, which will include tracking and any increase in overtime will be done through the year and we will be reporting back to council on that throughout the year. Final comment, if we determine partway through the year that additional help is needed, I absolutely will bring that back to council. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? Deputy Mayor Armstrong, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Lipset. Um, Barb knows this is coming. <laughs> I, I support um, the CBO, uh, her, her direction on this. I, I do have a concern. She knows it, and I just want to register it. Um, I think uh, you were estimating about 366 hours of additional work. Um, at least for the building permits. Um, I would suggest that's probably understated a little because I think there will still be some uh, applications that will need follow up and they'll have missing information and there will be a little bit more time involved <clears throat> to try and uh, get all of that information. So, you know, in my little mind, we're talking probably 400 or more hours, uh, which equates to about 12 weeks of work. So, to me, to absorb 12 weeks of additional work into an existing headcount is scary. <laughs> um, I, 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 I know that they're busy already. I know there are lots of new things that they want to do. Um, but, you know, I am worried that this will either burden them or create backlog or, or burn out some of our staff. Uh, so the only thing I can say is if we're not prepared to add additional resource to support this, and we do have $60,000 new coming in for the permits, by the way, so it's not like we don't have money, um, then I really will uh, support and encourage uh, our CBO to, you know, at the very first sign of any difficulties in absorbing it, to raise your hand. So I just wanted to get that get that out. I just I'm very worried. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Barbara, do you want to speak no. to that or you're okay? <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Discussion. <laughs> Go ahead, Councilor Pranz. I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, I, I, I kind of agree with uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. We may need more staff, but getting more staff isn't an easy process. So there aren't that many people out there that are looking for that kind of job because there's an overabundance of people having jobs that are needed. It's shortage. Yes, what I'm trying to say. Okay, any other comments? Go ahead, Councillor Braber. Uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, to uh, Deputy Mayor Armstrong, when, if it comes to the point where, okay, hands up, we need some, need some help and that sort of thing. Uh, what, what's the next steps in that? And I'll direct that to our uh, CAO. Uh, if they could maybe, are there outside agencies that could assist with uh, taking workload on? Or I know that wasn't the ideal, ideal situation for, for our uh, building professionals. So. Go ahead, Mayor. Through you, Mayor Nance, and I can probably answer that question. So, um, being a sewage inspector is no different than being a building official, where you have to be qualified in certain areas that you inspect. So, a sewage inspector has to have gone through the, um, well, they don't have to do the course, they can challenge the exam, but you have to earn the, the BCIN qualification for it. So, it's not like it's a company full of people that have that, it's individuals. Now, uh, installers have have to have a BCIN as well. Uh, those people would be more education educated than just pulling 
somebody off the street and training them. So there's that option. Just uh, continue through your, through your mirror. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was more of, you know, have a, have a list of contractors or whomever that you could reach out to and have, you know, already have that sort of in, loosely in place should you, you know, see that there is an issue instead of at that time, now we're going to react to it. Maybe be proactive about it, you know, anticipate it uh, and have some sort of plan B if and when that. Any other comments? Uh, okay. this, the certification that you talk about, CBIN? BCIN, Building Code Identification Number. Okay. Any other comments? See, no, I just have one. I just want to make sure that we're capturing all types of septic permits, like new ones, changes to ones replacement of some privies because there's a lot of inspections that get taking place in this township and I don't want to overwhelm people when you think there's only going to be 366 hours of stuff and it ends up being a thousand that would be impossible to achieve I just wondering if you've captured all of that go ahead through Mayor Lamson I did reach out to Duro Dummer and North Kawartha because they were the first two that um, left the party so to speak mm -hmm. um, they both stuck with the same staff that they had. They did not increase staff, uh, but I did learn a lesson through speaking to them is that the information that was provided to them uh, was just the installer's name and the date installed. So that's why I've been very proactive to say what I want and what I need. Thank you. I still have the concern that we're not gonna capture all of the, the 120 permits. I, I'm concerned that that's not everything. You're going to be overwhelmed with a bit more stuff, but let's hope not. Okay, any other comments or questions? Is anyone prepared to make a motion? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor Larson. Um, <clears throat> make the motion that we receive the report. We approve the date of April 1st for us to officially begin issuing permits. Uh, further, that we approve uh, that the discretionary program be deferred until 2025, with the exception of the required ones. And I'd like to add to that, if I could. Uh, and request that the CBO uh, have in place a plan B should the volume exceed what we uh, are anticipating. Mr. Councilor Graber. Okay. Do we have someone that would be willing to second that motion? I see Councilor Graber for a second. <clears throat> Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? <clears throat> that motion has carried. Thank you. Okay, we can move on now to 5.5 of our agenda, which is fire and rescue. We'll go to 5.5.1. Steve Brockman, Director of Emergency Services, will speak to this item. Council, um, before you, you have my work plan, uh, I won't read that over again for everybody. But as Don discussed, this doesn't um, speak to what we do daily. Um, these are just more of the, the bigger things we would like to accomplish, and we've actually um, dialed this down a little bit this year to make sure that we can actually accomplish what we're, we're shooting for instead of leaving a bunch of stuff in place. So, if there's any questions for oh, Does anyone have any questions on the work plan? If nothing, we can move on to your, your house budget. Chief Ross? Okay. Um, the Fire vehicles is, is fairly explanatory. We spoke into that earlier. Um, training, as we all know, has been a, an ongoing process since last year and uh, will continue to be so for a while. Uh, and the fire protection uh, line item have a few overages or increases, sorry. Um, so if there's any questions relating to them, I can give explanations. I can go line by line if you need. No, I, I think we can. Anyone has any questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lamson. Um, just a question: Your gas and diesel fuel, uh, you've taken the budget down for next year, kind of based on your usage this year, I suspect. 
um, which makes sense. It was like 35, you spent 25, it's down 30,000 for next year. In the parks and rec uh, budget, there was actually an increase in fuel year over year, both budget and actuals. And so I'm just wondering if you have the same assumption <laughs> around the cost of fuel and or if this is more a reflection of um, mileage as opposed to cost. Through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, so I've reduced it uh, $5,000. Um, and if we base on $1.30 a liter, say that equates to about 4,000 liters. So uh, we are going kind of on an average of what we've spent. Um, we could have left it the same and, and not spent it, or we could be over this year, but yeah, it is a guesstimation. Um, but we seem to have more direct purpose for traveling today versus um, driving around the municipality willy-nilly to get certain small jobs done. We plan to go to Galway on a certain day or by the weekend before the long weekend, whatever it may be, so we don't make a whole bunch of <clears throat> trips because that actually eats up your your staffing hours and whatnot as well. So when we go, we consult with our whole staff and make sure that whoever's going makes that trip count and such. So we're uh, we're guesstimating. Hopefully, we'll use less. And this year as well, we're at uh, 533 calls as of this morning, and we ended the year last year at 532 calls. So, um, and we still haven't spent the whole budget as of yet. So it is a projection, but I could be wrong. Nope, great, thank you. Um, I hope Dylan's listening. <laughs> Still get the same question. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Any other questions? <clears throat> Go ahead, Councilor. Thank you. To you, Mayor. Uh, just a quick explanation. It doesn't have to be a big one. But the CKL agreement. What's uh, what does that entail? Yes, through you, Mary Lamb said. So we have an area on Riverside Drive, above Cajun, across from Corth Lakes Fire Station. And we also have an area up in Kinmount. Um, and the idea is we have an agreement if to for them to respond. It's an automatic aid agreement, so we pay for that. But it gives a better level of service to our community because they can be there faster than we can. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Sorry, and that varies too on call volume. Right. Yeah, I just have a comment. I don't think the uh, training in your currents is planned. It's, 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 I can't believe you're going to get your training done for that small amount of money. It's a huge undertaking by a lot of volunteer people in this community. So I uh, really attest to some of the people in our community that are standing up and paying some dues. Thank you very much for that. Any other questions? Enough. You can move on. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you. I didn't need to get up at four after all. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We can move on now to Public Works. Kevin Greger, Director of Public Works. Please speak to the side. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry to Mayor, to the members of council. Before you today is the public works budget. Uh, the first part of the budget is the work plan. Uh, as, Steve, as Chief Rockbank mentioned, um, basically standard practices of all over from last year. Um, if you have any questions regarding the work plan, actually ask them. Otherwise, we'll just jump right into the budget. Um, operating budget, for the most part, has stayed the same. Um, we had a few increases, a couple of reductions on some of vehicles that were uh, we replaced old vehicles such as a sweeper. Um, there's a couple of new revenue items, um, one being the Rogers Tower, which is at the Crystal Lake Transfer Station. So that work is in progress, as well as the Blue, Bay, Blue Box transition. So we're getting revenue, but I'm going to let the director, the supervisor of waste, speak to that as I go through the road stuff. Um, also, just uh, yeah, basically keeping things for the most part status quo a little bit, a little bit increases here and there. There's a <clears throat> fairly significant increase to the fuel. Um, I noticed last year the fuel came in at uh, 239, we set it at 245. It's sort of a number that I want to monitor and if I can reduce it because we don't get our actuals until January. So if I can find that, you know, at the end of the year that our actuals actually drop, then maybe I could reduce that increase a little bit. Um, it's something that I'm monitoring, but when you're 
doing the budget in September, you're trying to get that glass ball out and see, okay, where are we going to go? Um, and obviously, the big thing about the fuel is uh, how often guys are going to plow the roads. Who knows what this winter we're going to Nobody really knows. Some are saying it's going to be one of those nasty old Canadian winters. The start sure kind of feels like it, but we'll wait and see what December brings. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions regarding the road section, um, I'll be able to answer them. And then if not, then I'll let Matt jump into the waste stuff. Does anyone have any questions about the roads? <clears throat> no, we're good to go. Go ahead, Matt. <clears throat> Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, as Evan was saying, it's mostly rollover, uh, not many huge changes here, uh, except for the one being fresh in everyone's mind, I imagine, the uh, revenue that will be coming in from the Blue Box program. Uh, so, so that's quite the boon <coughs> for the department. Um, apart from that, there aren't any major changes except for some reduction in maintenance fees for the, um, <coughs> the different sites for the actual buildings. Uh, last year we had uh, had increased it to make for the permanent outhouses, but this year we won't need the increase, so that is also reduced. Um, apart from that, as I said, there aren't any uh, major changes, more or less staying the same. And if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Matt. Does anyone on council have any questions on Matt? <coughs> What's going on? <laughs> Carol, did you hear that? I know. I know. I know. I think it's post lunch low. We have a post lunch low. Okay, well, thank you very much. We have no questions. We can move on now. Back to Kevin Greer. Okay. Uh, I, I think I okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh, yes, right. You have a couple of questions. Yes, go ahead. My apologies. Sorry, fair if I should just jump right into it. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, just a few, uh, just a small request, but they won't, shouldn't impact the budget. It's the same as last year. Um, we have the three mattress collection events that were a huge success last year. The only difference in those is we're switching one of them from Crystal Lake to Cavendish, just so that we cover all of the municipality. Um, and then we will be having our paper shredding event, which was also a big success last year. Um, we recover a big portion of the funds from the yeah. mattress event, but we do offer the paper shredding event free to the public. Okay. So, okay. if there's any questions there, feel free. Do you have any questions? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. Through you, Mayor. I think I already answered it, but uh, previous costs for this, same? The same? Through you, Mr. Mayor, costs will be the same. Um, and, and again, it's an estimate, but more or less a lot of it is. Is refunded the transportation. We we charge a fee per mattress, so much of it is recovered. Quick follow. Go ahead, man. Uh, <coughs> last year, so if it, if it was an estimate, what did last year's come in at? I so believe was that under you, Mr. Mayor, that it cost us. Actually, I don't don't know if it would be included in here, but it worked out to be, if I remember correctly, very close to the seventy five hundred. All things considered, yeah. so it would end up being we assume the same since nothing's changed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I think this is a go ahead, Councillor Green. Uh, make a motion to uh approve the is, is, is it a is it a cost re request or yeah, it's a, it's a okay, I just saw it just have it in the right. budget just in case we think of it. Here's motion to approve. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Cadigan for a second. I just want to make one comment. It's that, you know, this is an important thing we do for our municipality because we can't take them at our transfer stations. They have to be transported to Peterborough. That's so it's something that people did complain about and we could no longer take them because we have no method of recycling them. So this is a, a great program and thank you very much for putting that on your budget. Any other comments? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you. Okay. On to... <coughs> I believe, Councillor. 
Okay, Evan Greer, 5.6.3, the Director of Public Works, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you, Mayor. I'm Evan Greer, Mayor and members of Council. Before you today is the budget information paper regarding the Public Works Engineering Summer Students. Um, this is the same paper that I brought last year to Abbott for 2023. The only change I'm just looking to kind of confirm is that we're looking to have this moving forward. Right. So thank you, Mr. Yu. So this is a position that was requested last year and to in order to determine if it is something that is required annually. So there's another paper today to bring it forward for 2024 and then I believe if it's something council will support to look to create this position annually. So just through you, Mayor Lance, I remember council, just to build on um, the experience that I had this previous summer with the student, um, I found it very valuable to have a young engineering student um, for the department. He was able to not only provide me some technical assistance, he was able to go through um, different, you know, our asset management plan or help with the roads needs study, um, as well as he did a lot of work with the black cat reporting, get that up and running. Um, basically self-training himself to learn how to do it, operating and creating a how-to guide. Um, and then as well, was able to assist me on roads project. So he had his book seven, so I was able to provide him some on-site training, which as an engineer for myself, my own personal experience, I think it's extremely valuable to have that on-site training, especially, especially as a lower guy doing traffic control, because when you're an engineer in the field, down the road, you understand sort of the whole process of what a project actually entails. Um, and I think he was very well received by all the guys. He was eager to help. Um, it's just sort of something that I believe as you continue to expose young people to the public works industry, more young people would be interested in it. And that's something that I know even AORS, which is our Association of Ontario Road Supervisors, which one of the associations I'm a part of, they've been really trying to preach that as well, is getting that public works exposure to our younger people because I think a lot of younger people don't realize what the opportunities are within the public works field. Thank you very much for that. Evan. Anyone have any comments or questions? Uh, thanks, Mary Um Thanks, Evan. The only question is, would the student be eligible for the summer student subsidy program? I think it's the province that offers that. Um, thank you, and through you. I think it actually was the federal government. Oh, was it? I think so, but uh, we did use to receive that grant annually and it became much more difficult to get, it became a little restricted, the criteria, but we'll certainly look and try. Great, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead, Councillor Braver. That's for you, Mayor. Mayor, uh, Just a quick question, uh, as far as the, the cost, how many hours would you guesstimate that having that student saves your staff? Thank you, Councillor Braybrook, for you, Mayor Lamb said to, to Councillor Braybrook. Um, so it's it's tough to sort of grasp that. Um, it's it is a lot because there's some times where you'll go in and do something that I would normally do and then my foreman are tied up so you can go and run it and take a picture or something and give me a quick analysis. Um, especially come summertime, it becomes quite busy with the roads because you get projects going. Um, especially looking at like this next summer with the new dedicated mechanics facility, it'll be Hopefully by the summer be almost nearing completion, like you're gonna be quite busy, especially with the bus one one as well. So it's hard to actually capture that to get a full understanding, but I just know from you know, like it was in it was basically every single day there's something where it's like, hey, can you go over and do this for me? That would save me a, an hour in the truck to go over and do it instead of keep doing this or they're doing this, sorry. Yeah, so that that like I look at it, I look at it in a way that I mean eighteen thousand four hundred and eighty dollars for another person to, to augment your staff and it's uh if you if you looked at it I mean, it'd be less than eighteen thousand if you factored in that your your working hours and your staff's working hours and, and that sort of thing so i think it's uh thank you for that comment um, i think that all those hours of our really high paid employee would be saving would more than cover that. <laughs> He's moving on to other things to do. Any other questions? Okay, Councilor Brandon. Yeah, I, I just have a comment. I, I think this is a, also a resume building program. I think it's great to get young people involved and help them along with their careers. Thank you very much for that comment. Anyone else have any comments? 
I just have one. I must reiterate that exact thing. I think this is an important part of everyone's education. Some hands-on experience builds a person much faster than just an education in the classroom, and they'll know which direction they want to head with that career. And for eighteen thousand dollars to save to put someone in the right direction in their life is not a lot to ask for, and they're helping our municipality. Okay. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? We got a motion. Oh, we don't have a motion. Do we oh, have yeah. a motion? Thanks, Joe. I think I think go ahead. Councillor Graber was attempting to get <laughs> motion out of her. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Callaghan for a seconder. Now we're gonna have any more conversation? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Thank you very much. Now we can move on to Councillor Brandon. Item 5.6.4 of our agenda, public works budget request for private road program. Yeah. Uh, this idea came from uh, Highland Chief. <clears throat> I was in discussions with the deputy mayor at one of our conferences, and he indicated that a program that they had been running for a number of years was very successful. And there was a lot of participation from the municipality. And it's it's basically like if you read the description, it's basically a health and safety item, and encourages uh, people to do work on their uh, private roads or fire rates. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Lynchett. Um, it, Council Francis, I like the idea. Um, what I'm struggling with is I think, and Evan can correct me, but I think we've got about 300 kilometers of private roads in this municipality yeah. or something like that. And, and uh, through the mayor, uh, they have uh, similar in Highlands East and uh, they have a criteria uh, on who would get the, the road repairs. It wouldn't be the same road in consecutive years. It would depend on how many uh, repairs uh, this road would service. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think this is very similar to our grant. Uh, were we off of the grants in January to our uh, service groups? Mm -hmm. So I, I think this is kind of a win-win where we're showing the repairs that we actually do care about the fire routes and that we are willing to help out even if, if it's a very small scale. Uh, they, they're considering going to 50,000 this year in Highlands East. And they've done 30,000 for a number of years. And I did read the terms of reference and they're quite interesting. And uh, uh, I'm certainly, Evan could uh, review that and uh, make a recommendation to council. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor So just a, a follow-up, I think, to our CAO. Would this be eligible for our gas tax refund reserve? This is transportation related. <laughs> right. Thank you. And through you, it's an interesting idea, but this isn't work on municipal roads, right? So it's a grant yep. to give money. So mm -hmm. I don't know whether that would be. I know you can partner with other municipalities on initiatives. But I'm not so sure it'd be on a private road, but I could certainly look into it. And perhaps ask Highland East if they've been able to access that fund for that purpose. Good question. Thank you. Go ahead, Councillor Cadigan. Through you, Mayor, I'd like to ask for our Director of Public Works opinion of this. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cadigan. Through you, Mayor Lambshead. Through Councillor Cadigan. So I, it, it depends on what, how much we entail. Like, what is this grant? If it's sort of paying trying to understand what the council of grants and is trying to do. I think it's more of just a grant, so it wouldn't involve public works a whole lot. It'd be more of just, like you said, you bring the request to council and, you know, we fill our, our 131 would say, hey, we want 10 grand for some culverts and some gravel issues and be sort of a review by council. I, it's a, one of those balances, I think, I understand where he's trying to go. I also, it'll be tough to develop the criterion because we have so much how to decide who gets it and where. Um, yep. It'd be one of those, but I, I, I do understand the intent. Um, speaking, especially when I was doing the roads need study, so there's um, 
the company that we did the road scene study, they have an office in Kingston, so they have a lot of do some work with North Promac, Promac, and their sort of thing. And they have similar type layouts, and they have a, a similar ish program where they provide it's not work, but just basically money to these things. But it's sort of that be the, the one caveat is how you sort of determine who gets the money and how you do it. What is that criteria? Go ahead, Yeah, uh, according to the terms of reference that the uh, the Highlands East has, yeah. uh, the Rural Department has no involvement. Now they actually, <laughs> they actually have to sign a waiver that, that when they receive the money that uh, doesn't identify the uh, municipality that's responsible for the project. That basically is putting a culprit in. Yeah, and that'd be interesting just speaking through your mayor and city council. Um, just speaking to that the money because I know there's just a ruling that came out in Sudbury, big um, ruling with the road construction, and because Sudbury was paying it, they actually were responsible in part, even though they weren't the constructor or anything. So it'd be so you want to make sure that there's some clear delineation of this is in the municipal work, this is in municipally, you know, we have no involvement with this, it's just basically grant funding for the. the we are going to have some municipally owned vehicles possibly traveling in and out those roads so that we'd want to make sure that it was done. <laughs> Councillor Greybrook had a question. Go ahead. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Uh, I, I, I support uh, Councillor Franzen's uh, request in, in spirit, in principle. But I, I would like uh, I would like more information on it. Like I don't know whether that be by way of a staff report, um, building off of uh, Councillor Franklin's uh, request, uh, just so that we have details of it. So we're comparing apples to apples. I mean, we have over 400 um, fire routes in Highlands East, and it, you know, let's let's compare. Uh, but I I I do I, I support it. I'm only looking for a motion of support in principle. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I would also like to see a separate report. This is an idea brought forward from another municipality and working another municipality. So I think we should investigate whether it's more here. So we have a request for 30,000 annually. I don't know if that's the way it comes through. Sorry, through you. Perhaps I should have uh, read your uh, report further where, it's, where it says. Uh, Staff to repair, prepare a report. Yeah. And I guess the consideration that, you know, the staff, you're estimating that's 30,000 yeah. annually? Uh, that's what they were doing. Oh, so yeah. I, I just took the figure that uh, that they had been using, and I guess they're upping it this year, the information I received. Okay. Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, I was going to propose a motion to approve uh, a placeholder for $30,000 for this program. In 2024, and further that staff report back to council with a uh, a report, further details at which time we would make a decision to approve or not approve going forward, and finally uh, that we would explore staff would explore whether uh, any of our reserve funding could be used to support this. That is a motion. Do I have a seconder for that motion? The councilor Braber for a seconder. Any other conversation? I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Thank you very much, Councillor Franzen, for bringing that to our attention. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move on to item 5.7 of our agenda, which is recreation facilities. 5.7.1 is Dylan Kosher, Director of Recreation and Facilities. Go ahead, Dylan. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, we'll try to make this as least painful as possible. <laughs> um, so before you first up have my work plan, um, as we kind of went through in the open spaces implementation plan, um, that makes up the lion's share of what my work plan will be this year from the Lake Hall Amphitheater Development, which the status should say um, in the develop design concept and present to council for approval stage. That's where we're at. So we're not actually, we, we have started that project now. Um, the, uh, as well as all of the, the background stuff and some of our um, traditional operational type tasks. Um, if there's no questions on that, I can keep moving along. Any more questions? Um, Do we have a question? Oh, sorry, through you, Mary. Okay. It's a question regarding your, your chart, your 
it's more more of a comment. Sure. Uh, just wanted to reiterate uh, the thanks from the Lakers Hall board uh, for all all your work, Dylan, and, and your staff and the municipality for for moving forward with this. They're they're pretty excited. I know I'm reiterating. I'm pretty excited as well. So thank you for that. Through you, Mayor. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Um, so moving along, um, we've kind of got a little breakdown of what is in our budget. Um, some of the uh, some of the main things there: water testing, um, street lights through Buckhorn and Kinmount, um, we've got the library, um, civic addressing, um, you know, our general labor and wages administration type stuff. We have one active cemetery and two inactive cemeteries that are maintained, um, as well as our as our community halls, rinks, parks, and our maintaining our fleet. Um, Moving down the GLs here, um, we've got our, our grants, which you guys will uh, deliberate over in January. Um, and then we move to our library, um, which is seeing an increase in their levy of about $35,000 this year, um, which is you know somewhere between 10 and 15% increase. Um, <coughs> And so when, when council looks at our spending, um, you know, quarter over quarter, right off the gap, right off the hop, our lev the le levy comes out and the grants come out. So when you see that we're, you know, percentage wise through the year, way over budget, Carol usually asks about it. <laughs> um, that, that is why is because we have, you know, near, you know, $300,000 that comes out right off the hop a third of our budget. Um, I guess to get to Carol's question earlier about fuel, um, Last year, I think we kind of reached our equilibrium at that 25,000. We, as kind of our, our department grew and our fleet grew a bit, um, and then we had, you know, the big spike in gas prices there a couple of years ago. Um, we found it hard to kind of reach an equilibrium. I think we're at that stage now, pending um, vehicle usage. Obviously, this year we cut grass every week, and we could have cut it twice a week, um, and that obviously has an impact too. And traditionally, you get to July and August, and you're doing it every other week. Um, this year we have um, some minor increases in insurance um, reflective of some of what Donna spoke to earlier, reapportioning things appropriately to departments um, as uh, we were under build a little bit on that. So there's an increase there. Um, one thing that I have was remiss in, in presenting to council in my uh, mower um, request earlier is because you guys approved that, there will be a decrease in the maintenance line item in this budget. So that'll come down um, to be in line with kind of last year's value. Um, not a not a big savings, but a savings because we don't have to plan on you know replacing more significant parts there. Um, other than that, um, we uh, you know we're 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 pretty much where we where we're at from previous years. Try to keep it as close as possible. Um, with that, if there's any questions, I'm happy to try to answer them. Okay, thank you very much, Dylan. Does anyone have any questions about Dylan's? Presentation. Go ahead, Councillor Braber. Thank you, through you, Mayor. I'm going to go back to your chart. Sure. There's uh, one I'm really interested in. Yep. And just you can just give me a quick yep. overview. Uh, the public washroom stat strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, what locations are you looking at, and and what does that entail? Just so I can, you know, understand. The through you, Mayor, to Councillor Braybrook. Um, so that was one of the uh, derivatives of the Open Spaces Master Plan. We would look at. Um, basically all types of facilities. So we're gonna look at you know, our outdoor rinks, our beaches, parks, our trailheads, and what type of facilities do we want to look, does council wanna entertain moving to you know, self-contained um, you know, type washrooms that are an actual structure or that have a holding tank versus a portable washroom? How many washrooms do we put on a trail? Do we have washrooms midway on a trail? Um, evaluating those kinds of things. So when we do say, okay, we're building a new 2.5 kilometer trail or a new 10 acre park, we know that it's gonna take X washrooms or we know it's, it'll be based on however many expected uh, visitors we'll have to those sites. Cause you know, a portable washroom has, there's a number out there that's, you know, it can support 20 people for a week kind of thing, or, you know, that, that we're there every day sort of thing. So it's, it's kind of setting that strategy in place. So moving forward, when we do something new, um, we'll just be able to, you know, look down the chart and say, that's how many we should have. That's where we start. 
Any other questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. Uh, thank you, Mayor Armstrong. Uh, a little levity. The two most important things for open spaces are uh, washrooms and garbage bins. <laughs> Um, but the question, this is really a nit, um, mm -hmm. but I noticed in uh, Evan's presentation, there was grass cutting at the transfer station sites, and obviously your crew does grass cutting. So how does that work operationally? Do you share those duties or? Through you, Mayor, to Councilor Robinson, we do the grass cutting at the transfer stations. Oh, we do. I'm sure I saw that in Evan's presentation. I do. Grass cutting at the transfer station sites. No, we just, yep, yeah, no, we do it. I thought we were paying for it. Sorry, through nope. you, Mayor Lamp, Deputy Mayor Armstrong. My, my thought was that we were paying for the parks rec for that. Oh, the because time. of the waste, sorry, through you, Mayor Lamp, because of the waste management. Yeah. I see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? Seeing Lunch slowed everybody down. Yes. Yes. Keep moving, Terry. Keep going. <laughs> we can move on to Dylan again. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, and uh, to Council. So this is our buckhorn buck and geranium um, report. Um, this is kind of a is a two parter. We obviously have the buck, and then we have the geranium request. Um. So as we spoke about, the uh, beautiful Buckhorn Group does have um, some funds set aside. Um, some of those funds now will be obviously have used, for, they will have used for that insurance, as well as some of those funds are earmarked for the, per the geraniums that they've already ordered for uh, 2024. Um, and I believe the balances for the repairs on the buck, it wouldn't be sufficient to conduct the fiberglass repair. Um, we have uh, received word that the uh, repointing of the, the base will be completed um, by donation, I guess we, we could say, through um, Councillor Franzen, um, very generous. Um, but there we will still have to get um, the fiberglass uh, redone on the buck. We were did have the buck appraised recently, and that was came in at $60,000. Big long report here, it would be easier just to confirm that. Um, so if, uh, and it is on our property, so we would like to, uh, we're recommending, sorry, um, that for 2024, um, the council would budget $10,000 to complete necessary repairs. Um, that gives us a little bit of uh, contingency to work within that. Um, and uh, obviously anything that is transferred fund-wise from beautiful buckhorn um, would you know kind of go against that that value we're just not sure quite what that number is approximately um, and then moving forward um, about four thousand dollars annually to deal to keep up on on maintenance and for insurance for that um, for the buck and I guess at that, maybe I'll pause there and just see if there's any questions on the buck itself before giving in the geraniums. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the geraniums, this is a, a kind of a whole other animal here. Um, there's about 115 barrels throughout Buckhorn. Um, about 67 of them are on the Trent Lake side with the balance being on the Selwyn Township side. If council has the appetite to take this over, um, if we were to straight take over there, what they are doing now, I believe it's a very, very big endeavor that's gonna involve probably adding a couple seasonal staff if we were to go straight line. Um, so if council has the appetite for that, I would recommend going with the self-watering barrels, similar that we did with the hanging baskets. We went from maintaining those, you know, four to six times a week to max twice a week we're out at them. So um, major savings there. Um, with the barrels we're proposing here, there's significantly higher water capacities. Um, our anticipation is to be going out bi-weekly to it. Um, now there is also considerations for, um, you know, health and safety considerations. We would recommend going with a, a planter that is twice the size of the ones they have so we still be able to accommodate all the geraniums that they've ordered 
Um, but that way we could pick and choose the spots that are most easily visible and most easily accessible. Um, the health and safety and accessibility thing, it's a little bit different going from a volunteer who is electing to go do something versus us telling a staff member that they go do something. It brings on a lot more liability to both you know, the directors of the corporation and the corporation itself. Um, so being able to make that choice um, is what we, we would prefer to do. Alternatively, if we want to maintain that level of visibility of 115 barrels, um, the cost for initial purchase is near identical. Um, and we would um, just, if there is any that are like unacceptable access routes, we would just eliminate those ones and repurpose them somewhere else, uh, like in the town, of course, not at a different facility. Um, so basically we would, you know, maintain them. We would bring the water in, um, do the garbage. Um, I've done a, you know, a quick little chart there um, that outlines kind of the cost, you know, initially up to about the end of year two, um, taking it over as is would be the cheaper option. But once you get year three out and like these barrels are warranted till 10 years, like warranted till 10 years, um, you know, it's way more cost effective once we get to labor hours. We'd be able, we believe we'd be able to maintain these barrels, the wa self-watering barrels within our 2023 staffing levels. So we had four seasonals and then us three full-time crew. Um, we would be able to maintain it in that. If, like I said, if we went to the other way, which I don't recommend, I would recommend just not taking it over at that point in time, honestly, um, is we'd have to you know, be looking at multiple people to be able to maintain that. They have nine volunteers that are maintaining that there. So they, they put a lot of hours in for sure. That's a lot of information. Hopefully if there's specific questions, I can help clarify. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any questions? Go ahead. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Uh, so, looking at uh, your option one. Yep. Um, and, and again, I'm trying to work out numbers, so have patience with me. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, the option one, where it says replaces the barrels with approximately 60 self-watering barrels, does that include the cell one side? That's 60. Through you, Mayor. Yes, it would include the Selwyn side. So we would still apportion it about, it's about 40% of them are on the Selwyn side. So we would look to, so we would do the arrangement similar that we did with the hanging baskets. We would approach Selwyn um, and ask them if they wish to partner in this and, you know, do the same arrangement. We maintain them. They just reimburse us annually. So we bill them annually to take care of the hanging baskets. We would look to do the same thing. If they aren't interested, we'd have to have the discussion on if we want to um, just eliminate that side and not and not take them over or if council wants to take them over at, at their own expense. Um, but we would initially look to approach that one and, and ask them to pay for their portion okay. of that. Okay, labor so. labor and initial purchase and ongoing. Okay, so if, um, in the past, did the cell one contribute at all last year? Or? For the hanging baskets through you, Mayor, for sorry? The geraniums? Um, for the geraniums, I'm not sure. I think, did they get a grant from them, from someone? Thank you, it's review. I believe they get $500 yeah. from someone, but then I think there is some amount given for the watering to the group as well. Um, but yeah, there is a small amount. All right, so through you, Mayor, for my, for my sort of assessment, so if, so if we abandon the, the Selwyn side, that would be removing 24 barrels of the 60? There it is, yeah, yeah, 24. Yeah. 20, 24 of the 60, um, and I guess 40% off of 20,000, that would be yep. a savings of 8,000? Correct. So it would be 12,000 12, as opposed to the, okay. That, that's that's strictly more for me yep. to, to work through that, so. And if we uh, if we did adopt this this uh, motion, uh, the last point, uh, if we abandon, uh, we would be assuming that we would be saving. It would go from twenty thousand down to twelve thousand. Through through you, Mary. Yes. Yeah. E either way, um, we're looking at the twelve thousand, whether or not Selwyn pays for it, or if we abandon it, unless council wishes to actually take it all on themselves, which that's your own. Choice. Last point uh, on this: if if 
it would be nice to keep it on the selling side if we can. Mm -hmm. um, but factoring into that, because I know coming into Buckhorn, and to your point, as far as health and safety, a lot of them are up. So they may have to be excluded regardless. So that could factor in it, but that would be an assessment from, from your uh, your department. Um, so, okay. Through you, Mayor, for sure. Before we actually um, went through the procurement of these, we would, you know, do a formal site assessment just that they came in so late in the season and <laughs> short time frame, we just, you know, we took the numbers straight line and yeah. worst case scenario, this is what we're talking right here. Or, or even a possibility of if we eliminate the Selwyn side, Maybe have two baskets right under the buckhorn sign. Three mayor. Sure. Yeah. It really yeah, anything is is kind of possible here. As long as we've got something that's accessible for staff and is safe, like we're we're all for it. The more you know beautification we can do, that's what we're about. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Lance. Um, this is a stretch. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, because we haven't seen the recommendations for the CIP. I know that currently the grants go to individual property owners. It'd be kind of weird, I guess, to give our own money to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just wondering, I'm trying to minimize the burden on the taxpayers. I'm just wondering if we could take 12,000 of those dollars and use it towards the hanging baths or the geraniums. I still think 50,000 is a lot of money for community improvement. I guess you can't really comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're splitting hairs. But you know what? Sorry, for you, Marilyn, but I'm just trying to, as I say, I'm just trying to leave the uh, burden of an increase to the taxpayers. I think we should do this, absolutely. I think we should just do our site for $12,000, absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to look for alternative sources of money. Okay, go ahead, Councilor Franz. I do support the option one, as the other step. And, and I, I think that. Uh, Part of this it could fall under economic development. If we make a more attractive community, mm -hmm. we may attract businesses and we'll retain the businesses we have. And I also agree that if someone isn't willing to pay for the geraniums on their side, we just don't go forward with that. I personally would like to see a few barrels of geraniums on that side, regardless of who pays for them. It's beautiful when you're coming down that hill in the buckhorn. Yep. It's the same the other way. If you're coming yep. down through, it's nice yep, to see that. And every person you talk to says, oh, yeah, the geraniums are out, the geraniums are out. So it does attract people just to come and look at them. So I think it's a bit of, it, it's nice. It's nice to see that. So I would certainly support a few on both sides. Okay. Is anyone prepared to make a motion? I just want to make a friends. comment. Uh, if uh, the, the Ken Mount uh, Economic Development Committee came to us that uh, based out of uh, the Fourth Lake and said they wanted to put some baskets on our side. If we would be willing to pay for it, I, I'm sure that we would be in 100% in favor of doing that. So I'm not saying that someone shouldn't pay for their side. <laughs> yeah. <We don't> approach. <laughs> Please approach. For sure. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Anyone prepared to make a motion at some point? Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. So a motion to approve option one uh, in the amount of twelve thousand uh, dollars. Okay. And not it. Sorry, and just not assume the, the selling uh, baskets. We have the buckhorn buck in that in the, the motion as well. It's the motions the several items long here. Yeah, I was going to make a separate. Okay. Separate okay. That. Okay. Call for a seconder for that motion. Yeah. Let's see, Councilor Caddy, for a seconder. Any other conversation about the geraniums? I'm seeing none. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion has carried. Anyone willing to make a motion about the buckhorn buck? Go ahead, Councilor Third, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I would make a motion to support the ten thousand dollars for the twenty twenty four budget for the uh, buckers. Okay. Go ahead, Councilor Brandon. Are you second? Uh, I'll second it. And I just have uh, just in the text, and I'm sure that uh, this is an oversight. Uh, I, I did inform Dylan I would uh, cover the cost of materials. 
and it states in this uh, document that uh, we'll be charging for the cost. That's through you, Mary. Yes, the, the report had been drafted and signed and early. pretty no, I, earlier than I, yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the clarification. And then I think there was something in there about ongoing costs as well, was it not? Yeah. Was that part of your motion that you ran? Ongoing costs for insurance and maintenance. After 2024? Yeah. I don't really want to make a motion for okay. 2025. Go for it. Thank you for you. Um, so part of the request from the beautiful Buckhorn group was to take over the box. Yeah, so we yeah. would take ownership for the box. Yeah. So that would be a commitment, which we're looking for through this yeah. resolution that we advise them that we will take ownership of the box. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for support to do, please. Is that okay with the Then I'm certain we can add that to the motion. Right. Council Thank President. Uh, yeah, I just want some clarification to it. Um, if we do take when we do take over the bucks, uh, <clears throat> these repairs won't be an annual thing. They'll be something that we have five or six or eight years apart. So it's not like 2025 that we're going to have no. to do repairs to the buck. No. Through you, Mayor, that Mr. Fra or Councillor Franzen has that spot on there. That's kind of what the I think it was about two thousand dollars in insurance was what we were going on, and then the other two thousand. I don't anticipate to spend two thousand dollars there. It would be more a transfer of reserve would be a portion of that, and then when you reach your five or six years, you've got money sitting there ready to fix it. Okay, okay. is that a reasonable amendment to the motion? Are we going to try to put some monies in reserve? Sorry. Deputy Mayor. Sure. Sorry. We're, we're this question, to... I was involved. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I was being very patient. I think you were asking for a little bit of money to go into reserves. That's what the extra money was for there for insurance and reserves. Just so After we... 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm fine with that. All right. Okay. Any other conversation? I'm seeing none. I'm sure that motion is clear as mud. <laughs> we'll call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is given. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. We lost again. Okay. Oh my goodness, we're on the last page. <laughs> Amazing. Recreation facilities budget request, leased truck. Go ahead, Dylan. You can speak to that. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, as we kind of discussed there earlier, our uh, staff complement was seven in 2023. Um, we did retain an outgoing vehicle for the uh, for the peak months. We're just waiting to get it sold off now, um, which gave us a fleet of five trucks. And we found that um, logistically, when we have people going all different directions, um, it was you know it was much more advantageous to us. Um, Problem being with us is we're you know we're a heavily seasonal dependent um, department, um, being that we're a lot more active and on the road. So I don't want to add another truck to the fleet full time, um, but having that truck for the you know May, June, July, August period um, had a big advantage. Um, you know, costing out a, a price of a half ton over um, its amortization period, we're looking at about eighteen thousand dollars a year. Um, now we do get some of that back. Um, when we sell it off, depending on the condition and the use and, and whatnot. Um, you know, received some pricing um, to develop this request at about, for the four month period, it's, only, it's about $10,000. Um, now I know your per month cost is much higher with a, a lease, you know, based on that, but the total cost over a year is, is less as well as, you know, maintenance, if something goes wrong with it, you're just sending it back to the lease company and getting another one. Um, so that's that's what this request is for is to uh, maintain that you know with the advent of the taking on the geranium barrels um, we'll need that ability to be able to go a different direction I will likely now at this stage separate our watering duties from our beaches and parks duties which are traditionally performed together um, and they'll be able to go their separate ways with the approval of this request okay any questions for Dylan I just have one question. Sure. How old is the truck we're getting rid of? 2017. To the end of its low maintenance life, probably. <laughs> so I was thinking of keeping that for another year. Is that out of the question? Is it? 
mechanically how sound is that vehicle we don't um, have mechanically it's it's not too bad for you um aesthetically okay. <laughs> it's actually been stripped of all its decals to be sold now too okay, so <laughs> what are we going to get for that truck maybe that'll cover the heat check it out on gov deals okay. don't be afraid to get on there terry <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're trying to do go ahead and do your own show. yeah um very limited thank you um before you lose that thought, <laughs> I'm going back to the original document where we had in our budget request $182,890, and we've now added $22,000 $22, to that. Uh, the two that we eliminated didn't have a technology impact, so that didn't help us out. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting concerned about the overall tax rate increase. And I haven't been doing the math as we've gone along, but I kind of like to do a check to see if we're still under 4% uh, as a tax rate increase. And I know we have one more item to discuss, which is the Kinmount Health Center, which could potentially add another 10,000 uh, or 20, whatever we decide. So um, I'm okay with all of these approvals so far but I sort of have a ceiling in my mind that we don't want to go over 4% tax rate increase if we can possibly avoid it. So Don, I don't know if that means going back or through you, I'm saying going back to see if there's any way we can recoup something in the existing budget um, as opposed to declining or rejecting some of the budget requests. So sorry, that's really just a yeah, comment to that where we're at yeah, <laughs> and a caution. Councilor Cranley, you got a question? No. No, okay. I don't know if you're looking for a, a comment on it. Well, I, we should probably go through and make a decision on um, Dylan's request as well as the Kinmount Health Center and see where we're at. If we're over 4%, then I think we ask Donna to go back and see what opportunities there are sure. to get it debt back down below four percent rather than us trying to do that here she's the expert and, and could probably help us with that okay and i have councillor cadigan for a question uh yeah. no actually i was going to make a motion that we support the request for ten thousand dollars annually for these of the truck okay do i have a second for that motion i'll second do we have any other conversation i think it's important to get your staff where they need to be so sometimes that extra vehicle even those ten thousand dollars could save a lot of labor okay no other questions. I will call for the vote. All in favor? That motion is carried. Okay, we can move on to an item that we missed in our government services, which is the Kidnap Medical Center. I think they were asking for an unusual. We don't know what they were. Well, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that uh, we supply $15,000 to the Kidnap Medical Center. Um, you want to get a second or I'd like to comment. Okay. We have a seconder for Councillor Cadigan for a seconder. Any conversation? Yeah, I, I, uh, personally, I feel uncomfortable supporting private industry. Um, we're, we're talking about somebody that's probably going to make in excess of $100,000 a year, and we're providing free space, and every, every other dentist's office is uh, supplying that service with space that you pay for. But it's very similar to our medical doctors. I think it's an important service to kid mount, but uh, I feel somewhat uncomfortable for it. Okay. But you've made a motion. I've made a motion in support. Okay. Good. Just a, a, big, a comment. Um, I, I look at uh, anything to do with health and, and, and dental and that sort of thing. I agree with Councillor Franzen's uh, comments, but I'll, I'll add, uh, I can understand, um, given our proximity and attract, attracting yep. medical professionals, uh, that's a bit of a bone that we throw to them uh, to entice them. I mean, we're having issues with um, you know attracting doctors at the best of times to our rural areas without incentives and without breaching uh, any sort of bonusing and, and that sort of thing. So, so I think it's uh, it's a small price to pay to, to have that service and that sort of incentive, uh, albeit I still think it's a small incentive for for uh, a dentist to, uh, it's, it's 
small thing that we can do for them. Thank you for coming. Go ahead. Uh, I will second the motion uh, with a comment, and that is, I don't know if you all saw that 